god, we can totally make one of these. I don't even think I'm enjoying this. No, I like it. And we did, and it's fantastic. I adore this game, it is perfect. The following is brought to you by loudspeak.com. <laughs> Episode 193 of the Chair Shop Podcast is here, listeners. We're back for another week of talking about... Pfft, not even going to pretend like there's a set agenda. There isn't. Uh, talk about a little bit of wrestling at some stage. Uh, I don't know when. Uh, last week was the busiest wrestling week in God knows how long. And we talked for about two hours before we even got to Raw. So, uh, so and, and this week, nothing happened. So, who knows? Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Barry Murphy. How's it hanging, folks? Uh, with me, as always, are my ever dependable co hosts. First of all, chuckling away there in the background is Mr. Paul Griffin. Uh, <laughs> I, well, I'm, hang, I'm hanging very well, Mike. Barry. I knew, I knew that's what you were laughing at. I was like, uh, I, I assume he's not laughing at that. And then I was like, no, he is. <laughs> you know me too well. Um, and also with us is, of course, Mr. Joe Towner. Bippity bop. How's Indeed. it going, guys? See, this is something it's... I've noticed lately. I don't mean to cut across you, Barry. But I started this thing earlier. Well, it would have been last year now. Every time I come in the chat, I'd say Bim Bomb. And I just sort of stolen it from you. Now it's his thing. No, I used to make noises but way before you made noises. Yeah, you know, are you, are you, are you I, invented, the... whole, I invented noises. Yeah. Before that, it was just silence. <laughs> Sign language. Also, I'm pretty sure you're not the first person to say Bim Bomb, Paul. I think it's fine that I was. Uh, who's, setting, who, that sounds like that was someone's catchphrase. Some really uh, bim bomb. I don't think so. I'm thinking of uh, to no, Google. that puppet. Bim what was that puppet? <laughs> that puppet who was like bim bomb. Whoa, what am I thinking? This type of thing Joe would know. What? Uh, bomb bomb. Who is Gabo. that? Oh, Gabo. This... What? Gabo. No, Gabo an actual bim puppet. Bim oh, this is annoying. Brush. Anyway, no, he says boom boom. That was his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, just like Kofi Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a puppet too. Oh, man. Oh. Next, remember when they did that, that, uh, that segment with Beaker and Seamus? They should do that with uh, Kofi and Basil Brush. Except nobody would get it because it's Basil Brush. Yeah. Kofi's, just, Kofi's just going to ye old candy shop. You know, on, on one edition of Saturday Morning Slam. And, uh, and, he's, and you know, Basil Brush is like, boom, boom. And he's like, hey, that's my catchphrase. And then he kicks him in the head. Um, anyway, not what are we talking about? Shots his head on Saturday Morning Slam. Oh yeah, that's not, sorry, yeah, he, um... He, go, he kicks him in the head, but it shows Josh Matthews sat there with his big yeah, square he, head. He, yeah, he takes him to the to a merry-go-round and they have cat, cotton candy. Um, <laughs> Josh Matthews looks like a little lesbian now. <laughs> he does get the he's got, His face got a little bit of sort of fatter, so it looks a bit more like... Hang on, is that what lesbians do? They get fat and... No, because he's... He, not on the internet. He looks more feminine, because he's not... He's, got a he's a little bit. Elton John looking, actually, lately. A little bit. If 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 Elton John had some self restraint when he was getting dressed. <laughs> oh uh, God! Oh Lord! Oh Lordy! Anyway. Oh Lordy! We've got um the usual fun and games coming up. Um, Have we got games? Do we? Well, no. <laughs> metaphorical fun and games, then, uh, listeners. Um, we've got reviews of films and TV shows, possibly. I don't know. That's a guess. Definitely. Uh, uh, definitely. Then, fair enough. Good. Uh, we've got we've got uh, Barry's phone breaks again, and so he gets another new one. Uh, that recurring feature. That's all. That's also probably going to happen next week. Who knows? Um, and uh, we will talk about wrestling at some stage. Uh, there's some amusing news stories, not 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 epic news stories, the likes of which we had last week. But uh, lots of news. It's like, in in lighter news, Japan thinks Vince Russo's a racist. <laughs> oh, Mr. <Miso> Sully! <laughs> bro, what you gotta know is, it's television, and television viewers, they like the racism, okay, bro? Look, I, I don't make up the rules. Anyway. <laughs> um, 
before we jump into that, uh, far be it for me to be egocentric or anything, but I will kick off with my own story here. Crack on. Um, I have a, I have a new phone, as I alluded to. Uh, <gasps> Long time listeners, by which I mean two months ago, will remember that uh, I was saving up for ages, wouldn't shut up about getting this iPhone, and then I got one, and it didn't work. I got it from CEX, and uh, the camera wouldn't work, and so I took that in, and it was a it was a really really good deal on a five, but they had no other similarly priced fives, and so I had to get a Samsung Galaxy. S3, I believe I got. And that was working away for a few months. I wasn't mad about it, but it was okay. Uh, and then that died on me. Um, not completely, but the headphone jack uh, stopped working. And, uh, you know, when you pay that much for a smartphone... It? Which? Did you try blowing in it? Uh, I didn't... No, Why because that? it's not it's not a Nintendo 64 game. I think... Uh, I don't know. The principle's the same. Basically, holes, yeah, holes. sure. Holes... Holes. Did you ever did you ever meet those people when you were growing up who were like, no, you're not supposed to do that because you get moisture inside it and you break the game and they're like, shut up. You that is true, though. It's not true, though. It never, anecdotally, it never happened to me, therefore it's not true. Mm. So, I don't know who to believe. Wait, I do, me. Um, anyway, yeah, so, so this the headphone thing stopped working. And, like, if you pay that much for a smartphone, I want it to be my primary mp3 player and all that jazz as well and my podcast yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, no, no. so it's not like i was just gonna say and ah. your calculator and your alarm clock yeah i want it to be everything yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the definitely. point definitely so um so i was like well, f- well fact is i'm not i'm not you know bullshit i'm not having a, a compromised uh phone so i took it in and i was actually it's funny because uh you have to take it in when you when you've uh um, a quibble with CEX. You take in your yoke, you take in your um, your warranty, and they say, they say, oh, we have to test this. So you have to come back in an hour or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he uh, he was examining it as I was there before I left, and he's like, right, um, okay, so I understand your issue, but there is a little bit of water damage in here, which could affect your warranty. And I was like, well, mate, it has been raining lately. I don't know if you've noticed, but half of Limerick is submerged in water. There's, I mean, I mentioned this last week. Literally, I've had, there's been EU aid given out to people because there's been so much fucking rain lately. And he's like, there's a little bit of water damage. It's like, I didn't throw it into the Shannon for a bit of crack. You did it's swim like, up I, to the counter, though. Know, they, they told me when they gave me the warranty, they were like, this, this, this covers you for everyday wear and tear and stuff like that, but not breakages or clumsiness or anything like that. So I so said, I do... You snorkel off and you said, sorry. No, so... Yeah, I said, look, I, I, I do... I mean, call me old-fashioned, but I do intend to take my mobile phone public with me. You know, I, start, I don't leave it at home when it's raining. So anyway, I, um, I left and I had to kill time for an hour while they tested. And it was pathetic. I went to get coffee and I literally just sat there in the cafe, chewing in my seat, coming up with arguments I could make when I went back and told me my warranty was voided. I was, I was preparing for a fight. And I went back and they're like, okay, yeah, it doesn't work. I pick another phone there, you're covered. And I was like... Uh, all right, all right. Don't want to, don't want to fight me. No, I, I, I just knocked over his drink. You want to fight me now? No. <laughs> you're getting a lot of fights these days, Barry. I know. I'm out of control. Yeah, you're it's horrible. Horrible. Mad. horrible. So, you need some, but, um, some drugs. But yeah, so they um and uh in a uh, in a weird karmic turnaround. I don't know how this is karma. Don't know what that <laughs> word means really. Uh, I ended up being back on the uh, <laughs> the old uh, iOS bandwagon. They had a, a 4s. That was actually significantly cheaper. It was a really good deal than my uh, than mm-hmm. my existing phone. So I picked that up, and uh, they gave me the balance in vouchers. And I, so I picked up a couple of games. So I was like, I got my iPhone. I got some games. I'm loving the phone. I haven't opened the games. So I'm sure they're I fun. Have the same, I have the same phone. I have a 4S. And I, well, I, I really love it. It's, it is kind of weird because, I mean, Android has its upsides. You know, it, 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 it took some getting used to it. Oh, it's just it's so pretty. And it runs so fast, which the S3 absolutely did not. Um, it's a very good phone, very solid, I must say. And also, the S3 is, is it really feels cheaply plasticky made, and, and the iPhone's nice and heavy and everything. Yeah, so I'm happy. Um, I hope to Christ this one works and doesn't die on me because I've really fed up of, of swapping and changing these phones. But yes, so uh, there, that's my that's my latest phone adventure. Yeah. Um, other than that, it's been a, another quiet week of just uh, working away and uh, uh, putting off my uh, final year project. So. Um, so yeah, there was that. Uh, what do you lads up to these days? Well, there's not much rain here, happily enough. I've seen it. On, it's on Sky News every time I go out to... When I'm at work, they have Sky News on the TV. 
Mm. And everywhere still seems to be flooded, but here it's uh, relatively mm. normal. I don't have to use a, a little raft to get out to the shops, paddle around with an oar, or as they call it outside of Kildare, an R. <laughs> um, it's an oar uh, truth. <laughs> And uh, no, it's been fine. So I was um, at at the cinema today. Oh, I. Where I watched the Lego movie. It only came oh, out today. Aye. So first, Lego the movie. First day of release. Mm. And um, yeah, we went to an afternoon because it only came out today. So obviously it's Saturday, and we we went to, we saw it at twenty past two, which meant there were a lot of children there. Um, in the Lego movie. In the Lego movie. Yeah, I know you're joking. You're joking, mate. Um, <laughs> Mental. So there's the three of us. Youngest... Must, must, must have been awkward when the hardcore sex scene started. <laughs> Between Paul and the guy escorting him to the seas. Well, I said before that I hope that they. Have you guys either of you seen the the trailer for the new Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Mm, no. Uh... Fuck you and tits and I was like, I hope they play that before the movie because I want to watch that again. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, they do tailor the trailers, I hate to tell you. I know, I know, they they go. Why were you so keen to see this trailer? Because he says fuck you and tits in it. (laughs) 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 Fuck you. That's his nickname, Wolby. I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube, if you want to (laughs) just. That's where I saw it initially. Um, Wanted it bigger and louder. Exactly. It's better to see it in the cinema. Um. So we went for the 2D version, not the 3D one. Because um, cinema tickets are expensive enough as they are nowadays. Mm. And um, there was this one kid in the cinema who was very entertaining. Because anytime anything happened, he'd go, That was awesome! And then my, my <laughs> brother was with me, and he just... Every, like, we were sat in the row behind him. This kid was with his parents, right? And my brother sat in the row right behind him. I was mimicking this kid. I was wondering how the, the mother, I don't remember who else they were with, but the mother wouldn't stand up and go, could you stop mocking my child? Because <laughs> he, he turned to me and go, Give me a wee gosh! Why <laughs> is he jail? For God! Lego! Hang on, I'm waiting. Is this going to turn out like extras where it turns out he's like disabled or something? No, no, I don't think there were any. Just enthusiastic. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Lego movie. The leg is it Lego the movie or the Lego movie? Lego the movie. Well, no, wait, no, the Lego movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Anyway, Lego it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we started off. I I didn't go in with super high expectations for the Lego movie. Um, because I watched the trailer. The trailer didn't really grab me. I thought it was you know it looked like your typical kids movie rather than one of these uh, transcendent mm. movies that everyone can really enjoy and everyone's loving them. So I was like, yeah, you know, it'll probably be okay. I don't want to go see it. Um, we we're going to initially see Dallas Buyers Club as well, but um, I just saw the trailer for that. Yeah, it looks uh, it looks yeah, safe. But we we're gonna we're gonna steal it and watch it tomorrow instead. Mm. So uh, um, save money there because cinema tickets were a tenner for a ticket to the Lego movie. Yeah, so I'm not funny. spend it again to go see another movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so the film starts off a little bit slow. I'm not entirely convinced by it. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's fine. And then for the entirety of the movie, my enjoyment just increased constantly. If you were to draw a graph of my enjoyment, it would be a square that started in the bottom left and ends in the top right. <laughs> Straight up enjoy it, it. It's a movie... I've never really watched a movie that's been so constantly improving during the movie. To the point where at the end, I was like, yeah. I like. I actually had a big smile on my face by the end. It was so, so much fun. Um, and then I went out and spent 70 euro on Lego. Because, what? as a marriage... Well, did you just say you didn't want to spend 10 quid to go back and see another film? Yeah, but then we bought Lego. <laughs> because... You could have done seven films for that. I know. As a marketing tool, it's very, very effective. In the same way that Super Size Me makes me want McDonald's, and Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory makes you want chocolate. The Lego yeah, and 12 Years a Slave made him you know, want a slave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot a slave. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, didn't Wolf of Wall Street make you want to become a wolf or something? <laughs> oh! <laughs> um, the Lego movie really put me in a Lego mood, so I bought, I'll tell you what I bought here, hang on. 
I've made one of them already. I can't believe there isn't WWE Lego. <laughs> right, we have two sets of DC Comics superheroes, right? Nice. First one is um, Batman's Batcopter. Uh, you also get Matt, Man Bat, which is a villain, I'm led to believe, from yeah. the Batman universe. It's it's exactly what it sounds like. And, I, uh, yeah, yeah. And you get Nightwing, who's got a little flying uh, doohickey. And um, Paul is is deeply entrenched in the DC fandom, by the way, <laughs> listeners. He just you know seventy quid well spent. So yeah, I made the I I made the bad copter. It's pretty cool. I'm very happy with it. It was a lot of fun to make as well. It has a little retractable um, line with a hook on it, so you can you know pick up the villains as you fly over them or whatever as you're playing with your Lego. It's also got little rockets that you can shoot out. You can flick out. Uh, <laughs> so it's Nightwing's thing. So it was pretty cool. Happy with that. And the other one I got was DC Comics Superheroes Batman, the Riddler Chase. So you get a Batmobile in it, and the Riddler with a Riddler car, and the Flash is in it. So I don't know why why the Flash is there necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to making the Batmobile. It looks pretty cool. It's neither, yeah. it's neither your Tumblr from the movies, nor is it really um, you know, the famous 1960s Batman Batmobile. It's sort of a more generic looking one. But I imagine it's, it's probably not the animated series one either, because that one is far too round to be a... It's, it's pretty good. So, I bought... Two, you can hear the Lego inside it. So I'm looking forward to making that one later. I mean, Lego Lego is brilliant, to be fair. I, I loved it when I was a kid. I did make, when I was a kid, the only... I think the only one I remember really making and being really great was I did make Darth Maul's ship um, from episode one. Yeah, uh, because I, I love those films when I was a kid for whatever reason, and uh, I made that and it had Darth Maul and it had his little speeder yoke that he used to ride around in, and I made it by myself and it was it was great. Uh, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about Lego recently, funnily enough, because I because I saw those Simpsons ones they made and I was like, God, I'd really like to buy that and just make that, but like, why and how would I make get the time? How could I justify even doing that with? With the other things I'm going on, I I've, I didn't you know, I, I've narrowed it down to just watching Raw for a supposed wrestling fan who does a podcast and writes about it for fucking five different sites. Yeah. You know? Uh, well, speaking of which, by the way, I put one of Barry's old blogs up on com. It's the um, mm. the week that CM Punk returned from his previous exile in 2011. Yeah. It's, a, it's a definitely an interesting read, just to compare Raw from the time to now. I did laugh when, even back then, it was still uh, Kofi Kingston versus Alberto <laughs> Del Rio. <laughs> Um. So, yeah, we spent. Jeez, I spent a good twenty minutes in the shop as well, looking at which Lego I was going to buy. Um, because oh I wanted one that pretty much came in one big piece, rather than like they had some Star Wars ones, but it was more like three little sets in one box. I'm not. I'd rather have one bigger one rather than all the yeah. different pieces. Sure. Um. So I bought the Lego. Very happy with that. I bought the movie as well, by the way. Um. Great, great voice cast. Mm-hmm. Um, you got Will Arnett as Batman. Alison Brie is in there. Great casting. Um, Chris Pratt is the main character. Emmett. Is, like, they couldn't pick a more bland hero name. <laughs> um, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt is from Parks and Rec, I believe. Oh, okay. No, I don't watch Parks and Recreation, so I yeah, I've never seen anything with him in before. Yeah. But he was good in it. He also had uh, Elizabeth Banks was the female... Oh, um, Charlie Day from um, oh, so they did Philadelphia. Will Ferrell, uh, uh, Will Forte makes a cameo. Morgan Freeman is in it. Jonah Hill, very good. There's a lot of there's a lot of really good cameos, which I won't. Uh, no, don't spoil. I'll probably go see this. Yeah. There's there's one major one that I recognized was a sound alike because I believe he also does the same voice in Robot Chicken. Which I watch, so I won't. I won't spoil it, but there's there's some very good little cameos in there as well, and um, I gave it a nine out of ten. Would you believe? Wow! I started oh. off after half an hour. I was thinking like six or seven. After an hour, I was thinking seven or an eight, and by the end, eight or nine. Like that's how better each act got over the previous. And by the end, I was like, yeah, it's 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 really a lot of fun. Um, I wouldn't even necessarily say it's one that you need to be big into Lego to enjoy, or DC <laughs> Comics, or anything. It's just, yeah, well, it's I wouldn't imagine you would, no. No. It, does look, it just looks like a kid's film that, oh, Lego. 
Yeah, I mean, briefly, there are, you know, early on in the movie, there are jokes that are still sort of like, that's how Lego works. That's the joke. And you're like, okay. Mm. But um, it, it definitely gives a very unique look to the movie. Like, it was done in, it's a mix of CGI and stop motion. Mm. And um, very, did, very well. Did they, written, did they do, do the joke where one of the characters goes, ow, and someone else goes, what? He goes, I stood on a Lego. No. Oh, well, I'm not watching it then. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds shit. No, don't forget that it is Lego propaganda here. So it's not gonna, they're not going to point out the risks of Lego. That's true. That's true. Lego so, so no scene where Robin chokes to death on a Lego piece then. Sticks one up his nose. Sticks one up his arse. <laughs> or arse, yeah. No. Um, but I, re- I really, really did enjoy it. Just so. <laughs> so thinking that when on the forum earlier, Monkey said to you, what do you do once you finish building the Lego? Yeah display it or something else. I was thinking, what else would you do? Stick up your ass or... I... Well, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the question I'm asking, like, because I've, I've got enough nerd shit in my room, you know? Well, what I'm going to do is when I build them, I'll probably break them up again and try and build something between the two sets and then just build them again, keep the instructions, build them again, and then they'll just be in a drawer somewhere, I suppose. They're like, yeah. the, the only reason I bought them was to, to, to build them. That's the fun bit, you know? Uh, yeah, but if it's if it's something really cool, like if it is the Simpson house, for example, I would like to you know, sh- have it somewhere, I guess. But you know, my room isn't organized enough to have something like that. Like the only kind of nice things I have, well, not not even nice, but like cool things that I have that I think I'd like to show off and put on a display shelf are like collectibles. Like I've got like two collectible statues and stuff of like Batman yeah. still in the box, like buried away in a corner somewhere, not even on show. Mm. Uh, you know, a friend of mine, like, his room is rid- ridiculously organized, and he has display shelves where, it's like, he's, like, a big Assassin's Creed fan, and so he's got the special edition of every one of those games, yeah. and, like, the statues, like, really nice, expensive, hand-painted statues of each of the protagonists, and similarly, like, Batman and Gears of War characters, and they're, like, on the, uh, on the walls, it's like, eh, yeah, I would have to clean my room and make shelf space to do that, so I can't be arsed. Yeah, and uh, speaking of the Lego, I, yeah. I was it, we, I got an art and hobby in uh, Liffey Valley. They had the uh, the one that I bought when I was in London. They still had it, the uh, Jedi Starfighter. No, oh. um, which currently resides in a box somewhere because my man broke it, and I never bothered remaking it. Oh, so uh, she didn't do it out of rage, by the way. It was an accident. Oh, okay. well, I'm breaking your Lego then. I think that's how most Lego breakages do occur. Yeah. You got knocked off uh, the top of my wardrobe. Can you break a Lego? Yeah, if it falls from a high a high place and, and you don't you don't keep the instructions, it is essentially useless, isn't it? What? what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I think he's asking Paul, can you break the individual pieces? Yeah. I, if you if you apply enough force, like cause some of them are quite long and thin, I reckon I could snap one of them. Mm, one it, you know? Yeah, maybe. Even then, though, you can just plop it back on via a two two by one piece, little connecting piece. Mm. There you go, sorted. Um, so I watched that movie nine out of ten. I also watched Zodiac this week. Mm. Finally. Yeah. Which I won't talk too much about because Joe, I believe, already you already discussed Zodiac yeah. in this movie. I thought it was very good. Oh, it's very good, yeah. Yeah, very, very good. Um, the only problem I, I would say about Zodiac is Zodiac... Mm-hmm. What? Oh, go on. Zodiac, I feel... <laughs> Sorry, he, he was distracted by you wailing during his review, Joe. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think towards the end of it, it, it sort of suffers because it is based on a true story. Um, I suppose, yeah. It's only it, it it for the first like hour and a half. It's this very intense, almost chase, um, an investigation, and then towards the end, there was a bit where it feels like it's kind of ended. And then yeah, yeah it sort of peters out. The main the end. story has ended, but then you do get. Yeah. I mean, they they put forward a very interesting case because the Zodiac killer in real life was never found. No. Um, but they put forward a very a very interesting case as to their theory as to what happened and i i was reading up on afterwards and i I would probably lean towards the fact that the film is probably pretty dead on yeah but um in the movie one of the characters which may or may not in the end be revealed to be the killer um is sort sort of disappears from the movie for a while Mm. which sort of stops the chase like the movie just sort of stops dead for 
for yeah. about 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, I, I think I gave it an 8 out of 10. Zodiac, I really enjoyed Zodiac. Jill Hall's, Jill Hall's excellent, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, who else is in Zodiac? It's himself, Downey Jr., who doesn't do that much in it. Again, I don't know why he was on the cover of the DVD. I think this was pre-Iron Man as well. So. Yeah, I think this was just before he blew up and became yeah. number one box Mark of Ruffalo was so. very, very good as well. Yeah. So I recommend Zodiac. I, I People had described it to me as sort of a better Prisoners. Well, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd put them on about the same level. Mm, I slightly preferred Zodiac, but yeah, not, not too much to pick between them. And speaking of which, I bought some other stuff today, some Blu-rays. But Prisoners on Blu-ray. You've seen it, though. Yeah, I'm going to watch it again this week. Oh, yeah. Find out who did it. <laughs> no, that, that was that was in my top three movies of last year, so... Oh, okay. Um, picked it up on Blu-ray. A very long movie, of course. 153 minutes, but uh, two great performances in it. I also, I also bought some stuff I've not seen. I bought a Steelbook edition of Rush... Oh that shit! F- oh, Formula One movie. <laughs> Pop it in the bin. No, shan't be popping it in the bin, mate. <laughs> that would be a weird thing to do. It's up. You just bought. <laughs> throw Lego away too. Throw it all away. Although then again, he does throw away like money, actual money. Yeah. Well, I have, I have a story about that. So. Oh, do you? Is it about how you realise what a twerp you are? No. Um, and I bought complete series one to three of Sherlock on Blu-ray. Yeah, I didn't know you right. watched Sherlock. I've never seen it before. So. It's basically oh, exactly. like Doctor Who, but without the space bits. Oh, shit, then. Yeah. Sounds good, then. No, I've heard Sherlock's good, so I'm going to watch Sherlock's in. I was, I was actually tempted, because I, 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 what I had was a, in ZX was a 50 quid voucher. I was tempted. They had Blu-ray Game of Thrones, like, one and two season for, like, something mental, like, 30 quid. Uh... I, was, I was really tempted, but I was just like, oh, you know, that's a nice wee voucher I have here, and that's two seasons of a show I have not watched one second mm. of. I don't really feel like committing, you know? Well, it's... Definitely, I would say season one of Game of Thrones a lot is is very good, but I feel like every season since has been worse than the previous. Like it, <laughs> they've only done three, but three nah. was definitely the weakest. I thought. Nah. Oh yeah. yeah, and then two was weaker. I like two. I thought yeah, I I thought it was I thought one was excellent, two was good, and three was sort of middling. Yeah, I think because they split it of the book into two series. Story of my life, Hobbit. Harry yeah, Potter, so Twilight. There was a lot of walking in series three. It turned into Lord of the Rings, just people walking through I mean, forests. Even season three had its moments, like the the episode uh, nine was, of course, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. But too much of it is like, oh, here's Jon Snow being a shit in his <laughs> storyline. <laughs> like, oh. Every time someone says Jon Snow, I always think of the Channel 4 news guy. Yeah, he's the king of. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Westeros. That'd be radical. That'd be awesome. No, no, definitely. Borok Empire is a far superior show. Yeah. Plus, I've also watched like four, three seasons of that already, so I should probably, you know. That's finishing up after season five. Season five is going to be the last season. Yeah, I should get on that. I should, you know, I should really commit. Still haven't finished Gravity Falls, though, so. Oh my god, get on that. Or Adventure. I'm I, still like fucking four I'm, seasons. I'm on season episode. five of Simpsons now. So oh yeah, I saw that you finished sure. your uh, season four box. Yeah, I, wa- I watched six episodes at work on Friday. <laughs> That's how busy I was. Oh, God, I love The Simpsons. I actually, I, I don't know what it was, but we we got. I was out last night, and you know, you're with a good group of people when you get you get in a an old Simpson quote kind of mood for the night. Yeah, and I, and you know, I was just I can't remember, but I got I somehow managed to work in. Seymour, you're an odd fellow, but you steam a good ham. <laughs> and everyone thought it was hilarious. And I was like, I don't even remember the context, but, ah, oh, classic Simpsons. Yeah, I, on, on, on work, in work on that Friday, I confused probably about three people by slipping in. That's right, I did the Iggy. <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't understand how that applied to what you're talking about. <laughs> That was that was the best quote of those six episodes I watched. <laughs> so that's let me think. That one is over. Oh, Bart and Lisa yeah, Rice. Yeah, yeah. 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 So so what what else is in season four? Because I'm not, I'm not, I can't recall what's in season four. Oh, I have the DVD here. I'll reach out some episodes. Um, All right. Right. Hang on one second. Uh, season four. Here we go. In Simpsons season four, we have uh, Cam Krusty. Very strong opening episode. Very good, yeah. A streetcar named Marge. Yeah. Which is the uh, yeah. New Orleans song in it. 
it's all right. Yeah, good, good, good for a Marge-centric episode. I mean, Marge and Lisa are in current generation Simpsons. They are the sign of a shit episode these days. That's yeah, a good one. So are Homer and Bart episodes. Funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, Homer the Heretic, another really good one. Oh yeah, yeah which one's that? Uh, Homer stays church. stays home from yeah. the church. And... Oh yes, of course, yes. Something with the happens. with the absolutely phenomenal. Uh, slapstick bit where Ned throws him out the window and he hits the, <laughs> the, the, the bed and goes back That's into the other window. Uh, Lisa the Beauty Queen. Yeah, Grace. Another good one. Um, Trials of Horror 3. Mm, I don't recall which, which one. Which has um, the King Homer, King mm-hmm. Kong parody. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, Dial Z for zombies with You Kill the Zombie Flanders, He Was a Zombie line. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, the... he's dead. He's not dead, but his career is. <laughs> <laughs> and also the Krusty the Clown doll that's trying to kill Homer. This in that episode. Oh, that's great! Yeah, uh, you've got to you got to switch to evil. <laughs> <laughs> you've got the phenomenal Itchy and Scratchy the movie episode. Oh <laughs> God, so great! Uh, Marge gets a job. Yep, co-starring uh, Tom Jones. Marge gets a job doing new. Oh yeah, yeah, so that's pretty uh, good. New kid on the block. Which is the um, what's the girl's name who has who is Jimbo's her boyfriend when she moves there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't going to st- uh, kill you. I was going to cut you a little bit. Says Mo. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lisa, isn't it Lisa or something? The girl's isn't name. It? I don't remember. The, I don't remember the yeah, character's yeah, yeah. name. I'm sorry. There's an L. Yeah. Um, Mr. Plow. Mr. Oh. Plow, that's my name. That name again is Mr. I also used that this week. Someone was complaining on Twitter about about having to shovel their drive, and I said you should call Mr. Plow. And then in a separate tweet, I said that name again <laughs> is Mr. Plow. Uh, Lisa's first word. Uh, th- those classic flashbacks episodes oh, are always great. They are now ruined by the current flashbacks that are set in two thousand. I know Homer's triple bypass. Yeah, oh, great episode. Marriage versus the monorail. Oh! Joe's favourites, I think. Monorail! Mono. Monorail! Batman's a scientist. Uh, <laughs> Selma's choice. I shouldn't have stopped for that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Selma's choice with the legend of the dog faced woman. Yeah. Um, brother from the same planet. Yeah. Which is the, the Big Brother episode. Kicks, okay. That's when it's time to kick some back. Uh, I love Lisa, which is incredible with Ralph so, and the choo choo oh, choos. Oh, yes. oh rec- recently, um, recently immortalized in a Botchamania ending. Yeah, you can actually see the moment where his heart rips in two. Ah. Um, Duffless, which is um, T-total for, a for a month. Yeah, yeah that's also. Um, in the in the B story is Lisa pits Bart against a hamster for a science <laughs> fair, and then yeah. Bart wins because he puts the hamster in an airplane, toy airplane. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the six that I watched at work. First of all, we have last exit to Springfield, which is um, dental plan. Lisa needs braces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's come to this a Simpsons clip show. Uh-huh. Which for a clip show, it has I think fifteen minutes of new content. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. not bad, really. Clip shows are good. Uh, the front, which is the one we just discussed with, uh, that's right, I did the Iggy. Uh-huh. Whacking day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which is uh-huh. another very good one. Um, Marriage in chains. Where Mar, which is um, Sheriff Lobo. <laughs> Flintstones, Chubal Morphy. Yeah, yeah, Marge yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Krusty gets cancelled, which is. The Gavo episode. Oh. So that's a very strong season, season four. Oh. All the kids in Springfield are little SOBs. <laughs> They're not a whole little SOBs in another week. <laughs> so not, not a Gavo, sleep, please. Not a, not a bad one in the bunch there. <laughs> yeah, I like that Gavo is is just uh, sentient. Yeah, self sufficient sentient <laughs> puppet who argues with the other guy. I'll do the hoodie goody. I'll imitate Fritz So there you go. That's season is that, four. Is the one where um. Um, I'm trying to think because uh, it wasn't uh, I'm trying to think of there's an itchy and scratchy episode where it gets cancelled or something and they replace it with this like Eastern European no that was um, the Gabo episode because they moved to the Gabo show oh that 
That's so great. That was a great cross TV. Who <laughs> the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. oh, oh. Yeah. So there's this, the, okay. there's our rundown of Simpson season four. Yeah, with, yeah. With there's added lines that, from those episodes. Sometimes there is a timely review, as always. <laughs> that seems correct. Nineteen ninety three. <laughs> oh lordy. So what? What about yourself, Joe? Have you been up to anything mad? Nah, not really. No. Well, nah. <clears throat> well, that's not true, is it? Um, what? What do you mean, what? Oh. You, where, where, where were you last Sunday? Oh, I just went to a quiz and then, uh, yeah, came home. Oh, well, well, hang on, you went home. What about the celebration drinks? After you won? Yeah, just, uh, don't want to rub it in. So just, <laughs> don't just, know what, uh, just a quiet one. Yeah, oh, just, he, just, he just sprinted home afterwards. Hmm. With, a, with a look of glee on his face. Yeah. <laughs> he still sounds bummed about it. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's because, unlike John Cena, I actually sell my losses. <laughs> oh. I don't yeah, come out and get another quiz the next night. And just, you know, he, wants that to, one. He, wants to, he wants to properly put over the team who actually won. Except for the bit where he accused them of cheating and, you know, Googling things on their phone. But other than that, I mean... Well. So, unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, well, but yeah. what, was, what was your team's final score, Joe? We got 60 and a half out of 61. <laughs> that's pretty good yeah, that's alright yeah not bad not perfect it was quite easy though it wasn't like I think well, that, easy, that easy enough evidently anyone who's a fake fan of the show would have got most of them didn't you get although to be fair from, from my understanding of what happened they were kind of the reason it's point five instead of 61 out of 61 is they were absurdly harsh on the wording of one of your answers which, yeah, they the showed the nature of the quiz is kind of a weird turnaround for them. They to showed do. like video clips, and you, it was like, oh, what what comes next? Uh, <laughs> the referee bongs into one of the footballers. Yeah, <laughs> da, 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 the da, granny falls da. over. You can see her knickers. Yeah, and we, you know, but it wasn't like what's what's the next line. It was just like what hap- what does he say, or what you know what happens next. So we didn't get the exact quote of a line. So there you go. <sighs> So anyway, with all that said, I, I didn't watch any films this week, by the way. Joe, you didn't watch any films? Mm, no, I watched a lot of wrestling, unfortunately. It, really? Like, more than usual, or? Yes. I watched just by virtue of the fact that Raw is eight hours long now, so. I watched Impact and a bit of Smackdown. All right. Mm, we'll talk about those uh, in, in due course. I didn't watch any films. Played Metro Last Life, which I was threatening to play last Very week. Good. Uh, good, yeah. I mean, for, for a free game, I got on PS Plus. It's um, it's really good, really, really pretty game. And uh, you know, if you're sick of post-apocalyptic nuclear Russia and living underground because there's monsters on the surface, and you know, that's kind of been done to death a little bit. But it's good. Um, it's kind of stealthy and kind of realistic. I mean, it's 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 kind of grounded in reality in the sense that L2 wipes the visor on your gas mask, so you can actually see where you're going. It's that kind of thing. Um, you know, resource gathering, and you can't see where you're going, so use your flashlight. Oh, it's out of battery? Whip out your lighter. Now you're really scared, aren't you? You know, it's things like that. Um, it's good. Too early for me to really say much else about it. But yeah, that's good. Um, PS Plus is always, as I say, recommended to anyone with a PlayStation device of any sort. Um, Have you been caught up in this flappy bird phenomenon? Yes. I, I, I instigated it among my circle of friends, in fact. Yes, in fact, that's what I've been playing this week. Fuck Metro. I've been playing Flappy Bird. Endlessly. I'm already bored of it, to be honest, but it was a good couple of days. I played it for about 30 seconds. It was shit. <laughs> um, mm. it's, not, the, it's the helicopter game, but rubbish. How, what's, how's it rubbish? What's wrong with this? It's, the, the controls, the graphics. There's no, well, the graphics. It's a flappy bird. I mean, that's been done. Angry birds. See, I mean, to be fair, I'm over this a lot quicker. I think everyone's over this a lot quicker than most mobile gaming crazes. I mean, like, yeah. you know... Angry Birds blew up and was everyone, everyone was talking about it for months. And even though it's not at the peak of its popularity, they're still fucking turning out teddies and spin-offs and Angry Birds Star yeah, Wars. And, and, you probably know, do and, a movie of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think there is a movie in the works of it. I'm not sure. You know, do do a gritty reboot, Angry Birds Modern Warfare, you know. I think that Flappy that's still going strong. Flappy Bird feels though. like it's already dead on arrival, but you know. No, I feel like Flappy Bird has the same potential for... Shitty spin-offs and 
Not really. I think it does. I mean, I've, there, there's I've no, never played it. There's no elements just from what to I it. See. It's literally just yeah, a but what, what you do yeah. is you replace the pipes with um, uh, lightsabers, and there you go, Star Wars, Happy Bird, and it's a little Darth Vader head or something. There you go. Five euro, please, and people will be snapping that up, because stupid. Mm. That's true. Mm. Says the man who spent 70 euro on Lego today. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know, I just feel like it's so simple to the point that you can do so many variants on it. Um, Time will tell. I mean, they don't have to keep the exact same formula where it's just well, the an guy's pipe actually, a down pipe. The guy's you know, removing the game, so. I mean, he's he's he tweeted earlier today that he's he's bring, taking the game off of the app store. Why? Because he said I don't know. He didn't really explain. I just read a story about it. All right. So much for those plans. In less than 22 hours, Flappy Bird will be removed from stores. Creator Dong Nguyen announced via Twitter. He says, I'm sorry, Flappy Bird users. 22 hours from now, I will take Flappy Bird down. I cannot take this anymore. <laughs> oh, the fame went to his head. He's just, he's coked up and, uh, you know, losing his mind. That's because it's going to come out at a new price of a $10 or something. Yeah, yeah. Or free to play. You've gotten to 100. Five bucks to keep going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's what's being all satirical about games and that. Yeah. Um, I've been playing FIFA 14 on the old. PlayStation oh. 4. Oh, I. Jesus Christ, thing. it's so hard to sell players. What do you, what do you mean? Because what I, what I like to do is when I play FIFA, I like to sell, sell off all the old boys. Ah, oh, slavery, get disgusting. A new, a new, uh, <laughs> get a new young team in. So I've been trying to sell, for example, Robin Van Persen. He's transfer listed, right? Not a single inquiry in for him. But they keep trying to buy Johnny Evans off me. So right. that can be a little frustrating because I want to buy, I want to buy the 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 Hesse's of the world from Real Madrid, and they're not interested in an exchange for Patrice Evra because they don't want Patrice Evra. They just want my money, but my board won't give me enough money, and I already had to spend forty five million on signing Juan Mata. So that sounds terrible. Yeah. No, it's the the football part of it is still fun. The game itself. Yeah, well, I was going to say. I mean, is, is this FIFA or like football manager? Well, it's, I'm playing career mode, so you... Right, yeah, so you have to take on that into so, consideration. Much like Real United, we're four, fifth in the league, I think. Chasing Europe. Um, United are fourth or fifth in the league in real life, are they? No, were we? Seventh? Sixth? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, we're further down. Um, yeah, it's fun. I just, beat, I just beat Chelsea away in the league 5-0. And then I was beaten at home 1-0 by Crystal Palace. So... You have your on and off days. Normally what I'll do is I'll play one game and then turn it off. I might get through two or three a day, so. Bit of fun, you know? Mm. Until, until Infamous comes out. Then I'm sorted. And, uh, yeah, I've been watching True Detective as well. I'm all caught up with that now. That's a really good show. People need to watch that show. Yeah, that's on my list too. And no, no Mama update, because Mama is on holidays this, this week. Mm. Oh, is it, the, is it the, 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 the pagan festivus? holiday is it <laughs> of um i don't know yeah maybe he's at some wiccan convention or something he's away for two weeks he won't be here next week either. him him and just a bunch of sort of contrary 17 year old some, white fat, some fat 13 year olds yeah 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 with, with we, white makeup on reading out of their textbooks and stuff Sticks. And like, this, this is my magic stick <laughs> it wasn't so magic when i found it but it is now <laughs> and um there was a guy on the bus today as we were coming back from the movie <laughs> with, um, with a can of Bavaria beer oh Christ in his, uh, in his hand drinking on the bus of course and I just had a conversation as we were going in as to what point in your life you reach where you drink on the bus oh, yeah well I'm not there yet so. where I, you just can't wait until the end of this bus journey you need to be drinking yeah so he was there drinking talking to himself going f f fucking dumb fucks fucking dumb fucks and as you drove by the guard estate sure I wasn't talking to you <laughs> well, he was looking deep into my eyes. So fast. <laughs> and and, the Lego pointing, had and pointing with his free head. Well, he had his phone playing, right? He had this. Um, oh God! A pink, a pink Blackberry, <laughs> blasting um, very light British hip hop. I'm not sure who. Maybe it was N Dubs or something. Some of like that. Yeah. And he was rapping along. God, to it, it just gets worse. Rapping along to it and moving his hands around like he was having yeah. And then the phone. The, the bus shuddered and the phone fell off the chair. So he had to bend down and get it. 
Mm. And as he bent down, he came he came up and looked right at my friend who was sat in front of us, right? Yeah. And he went, it's purple. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're self-conscious and he went, yeah, about this my, blackberry no, probably stole kind of like, yeah. off a girl. You know what he meant? He went, it's not purple. Or it's, it's purple, it's not pink. About the phone, obviously. And yeah. And then he, and then as he as he went past the guard station, like I said, he was saying like, "Fucking don't fuck the fucking," right? Why and then he, then he was, went past, past the church. He blessed himself, <laughs> and then he missed his stop. Oh. At the end, he went, "Oh, dude, oh where?" Are we? And as he looked out the window, he peered out the window very intensely, and then ran down the stairs, and he was gone off into the night. So, wow, what a bus, what a bus trip. And, and Bavaria is really. Horrible, cheap shite as well. Because I had some last night. Yeah, I, 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 I doubt he was going to go for some Don Perignon on the yeah. way home. I mean, I was clearly found somewhere. S- else. Sipping a grey goose on the rocks. Exactly, you know. Yeah, he looked like he looked like the kind of guy you'd cross the road to avoid smelling. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, he was sort of dishevelled. He was young enough now. I'd say he was probably only about late twenties. Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that was on the bus today. So that's really all I can say about this week. That's all the news that's happened uh, around these parts. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, tr- I'll tweet out a picture of the Lego when I finish it as well. Yeah, do. So people can marvel at my lovely Batcopter and Batmobile combo. Um, I'm just uh, examining my junk folder as we get ready to say <laughs> I was like examining your junk. <laughs> as we yeah, get ready, there's, to... the, there's the old penis still there. It has a hanging bar here. Yeah. As we get ready to segue into the uh, mail bit. Uh, okay, I've already checked it once. The mail bit. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> oh I've already, already, already checked it once today, and I found an email for CSP. Did you? Uh, uh, that was in the Be- wrong folder. Better than a lump. <laughs> and I had to move it. Not a lump. The email. Uh, so. <laughs> We're going to get into that right now. Yeah, let's see. Anyone else. We need to come for the name for this segment. No, we don't. We need to call yeah. it the bit where we read emails. No. Emails, we call it. Mm, it's not the catchy. So. Let's, let's do the emails. It doesn't need to be catchy. It's not the name of the podcast, which is also e- about ca- e- catchy. Email. <laughs> All right. E- well, he's e- struggling with that. I got an email from Steve. This is a chat I was doing. Uh... As a fellow Chikara fan, I'm curious for your take on Quackenbush's explanation of the whole angle and if you think it was a success. During his interview with Alvarez, he mentioned that people complained there wasn't an entry point for new fans into Chikara because of its long-term storytelling nature, and that uh, this show in May is now the entry point for new fans. Uh, where does he expect the new fans to come from when he hasn't run a show in eight months? I know the show was sold out, so kudos to him, but I'm guessing it's the hardcore fans who are going. If that's the case, what was gained? Um... Can you, uh, you can know, you give us some backstory it, into this, by the way, Barry, before you begin? Okay, so Chikara uh, did an angle. Chikara, you know, it's it's often debated among the fans and the naysayers that Chikara does a lot of long-term, slightly convoluted angles that are either boring or not interesting enough to keep people... to, to allow people to seamlessly enter. Like, I started watching Chikara in 2009 when they had nothing of the sort... And I just started watching one of their King of Trios shows. I was like, it's easy. Pick it up and watch it. I don't have to... I don't need any prior knowledge. It's all easy enough to grasp. But, you know, they they done a number of long-term storylines that were very convoluted. And because it's Jakara and it's silly, they like to do things, you know, that are, that are not very conventional storytelling traits. Like, for example, in their most recent story that involved them going out of business, there was time traveling and other nonsense and long-term strands and internet viral stuff basically it went beyond just guys in ad costumes having wacky matches it was something of a chore to keep up with and i didn't bother i was not tuned into chikara at all there in its closing months and uh, so basically they went out of business or they they claimed to have shut their doors last uh, june i believe it was and uh, over the last eight months or so they have been doing a number of uh, little like viral angles on the internet and dropping hints here or there and stuff like that and it all culminated in that National Pro Wrestling Day this day last week, which was a free event that was streamed on, on YouTube and uh, it was done for a charitable cause. Mm-hmm. And uh, it culminated with Chikara doing a big comeback angle and announcing that they were running an event in May and everyone was very, very happy. Um, I'm very happy they're back because they're one of the first companies I ever truly liked uh, as an indie wrestling fan. But I would also really agree with um, 
St- Steve's message here. If this was all an angle all all along, and there was um, there was dispute about that, some people thought it was. Some people thought it was covering up for legitimate problems um, behind the scenes of Chikara. And I I don't understand what was accomplished by this. I think unless they knew internally that everyone's kind of fed up with this story they were running. Uh, the story at the time of their closing was that some evil corporation was trying to take over Chikara and put it out of business. And it seemingly succeeded. And unless they were just like, okay, let's take a few months off, let people forget about that, and then we'll do a big comeback angle and announce a show, and we won't, we won't acknowledge anything that happened beforehand, and we'll just get back to simple, colourful characters and fun stories. I don't know. So uh, I'm kind of with Steve. I, I don't know what was accomplished by it. I don't know how easy it is for people to just buy a Chikara DVD and get stuck in, as opposed to PWG, which I feel is incredibly accessible and easy to pick up anywhere and start watching. Um, so yeah, uh, time will tell. Hopefully we will get some answers on that actual show in May. And uh, and hopefully hopefully people will pick up and start watching, because it's, it's a great company when it's, when it's at its best. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll segue straight away into my next email from Scott. Society, uh, I mentioned Titus, Darren, Young, Otunga as people I'd rather see in the rubble and that as examples of people they could have used uh, who they could have used who have more of a future in front of them than a past behind them. I also wanted to point out the problem with the idea of voting with your wallet when it comes to pay-per-views. If there are six matches on the pay-per-view that I really want to see but the main event doesn't interest me, why would I deprive myself of the other six matches just because the final match isn't interesting? With that logic, since 90% of the Diva matches aren't very good, I shouldn't buy any pay-per-view where the Divas are wrestling. Well, that's flawed logic right there, because I'll tell you why. Even if you are buying for six matches on the undercard and not Randy Orton and John Cena, Randy Orton and John Cena will get the credit. That's the point. It's not fair, but that's reality. You, 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 know, you, you unfortunately don't get to attach a memo with your pay-per-view order and say, for the record, I am buying this to see the Daniel Bryan match. That's not something you get to do. And so whether it's fair or justified or not, the credit will always go to the people who are on top. And so... There is a network you could. You could just switch off when Cena and Orton come on. I don't know if they're going to... Where are they? They're going to what? I don't know if they're going to keep track of that, though. Oh, of course they will. And I mean, the best example is, is The Rock and Cena last year. I mean, that was a rematch, so it wasn't a special... And a lot of people probably wanted to see CM Punk and Undertaker and whatever else is on that show. But mm-hmm. internally, do you think anyone believes that in WWE that, you know, these 70,000 people are, he- are here to see, you know, Team Hell No versus Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston or whatever, mm-hmm. you know? On the same note, when Miz main evented that huge WrestleMania, yeah. was he getting the credit? Or was it like, no, obviously it's The Rock. So. Yeah, it was The Rock, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing. It's just, you know, uh, it's the reality of the situation. Uh, because you can't just get to the matches you like. Not buying the pay-per-view sends a message to the company, but that message could just as easily be read as, I want to see Orton versus Cena for the 938th time, but I didn't want to see Brian versus Wyatt or Punk versus Ambrose so by the event. Well, no, because, I mean, they don't they don't think that. They always gauge by the main events. It's just, you know, no one's going to blame an undercard match. You know, it's just not the way it works. Even even when they do their conference calls, they're surprisingly blunt when it comes to pay-per-views that bomb. They just say that our main event attraction was not what people wanted to see. So, you know, it's the people on top who, who bear the failure and also enjoy the success. That's the way it works. The company only knows what matches aren't enjoyed by the feedback they get and not buying the event just as you didn't like the entire card. Thanks for another week of entertainment, Scott. Thank you for your email, Scott. I hope I answered your questions there. Uh, he sends a second one. He says, hello again, Barry. Just thought I'd pass along something I heard that might explain the terrible Big Show Lesnar match. From what I heard, it appears the show injured his hand at a house show the night before and couldn't really do a match. So they came up with what we saw as a way to make Brock look like a beast without completely burying show and without having to cancel the match completely. This makes more sense than anything else I've heard so far, Scott. Uh, probably. I mean, that could be that's reasonable enough. Uh, I don't know that they would have done it that much more differently anyway, though. I mean, what the way they did it made a lot of sense. In, in terms of, I mean, if he had hurt his hand, I mean, what would they have done differently had he not? Would they have had more of a match? I don't know. Maybe. Mm, I don't know what that would have achieved, really. In fact, <laughs> if anything, if that's what they were originally planning, it's better maybe that he did it. Mm, um, well. And in fairness, I mean, to let credence to that, we've not seen the big show in a while. Whether he's just selling the, the beating or whether he's legitimately injured. 
you know? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, just on my emails. Ah, fuck. Okay. Um, okay, I've got two here. Sorry, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not angry with you. I'm actually playing FIFA. I'm after letting in a goal against Stoke after three minutes. Arnautovic has scored against me. Um, my first email comes from Steve, my good buddy Steve. Come here and have a cuddle, Steve. Why don't you? Ah, oh, well. Okay. Anyway, Steve says celebrity encounters. That's the subject. Greeting from greetings from the Bay Area. A friend of mine sent me a link to a thread about encounters people have had with celebrities. My favourite, and I hope it's true, is a man who left Domino's Pizza with his order when Bill Murray came up, stole the pizza, and ran away shouting, No one will ever believe you. Is I don't believe most... that. I don't believe that at all. <laughs> he says the most frightening encounter with fame that he's witnessed was when his wife and he were in Vegas. We were in the same we we were there the same weekend the Latin Grammys were being held at the hotel. And the place was overrun with eager fans. While waiting for the elevator so we could go up, an elevator door suddenly opened and a 70-year-old Hispanic man got off the elevator. I still have no idea who he was, but to the fans, he was the equivalent of the Beatles. Hispanic women of all ages came sprinting towards him, knocking people over in the process and started surrounding the old man, ripping his clothes off. What? The old man's security team finally cut a path to freedom for him and he was quickly taken away with a string of Hispanic ladies in chase. It was a surreal and frankly scary scene. Have you guys said... Was it Ray Mysterio? <laughs> Looking pretty old these days. He says, have you guys had any bizarre encounters with celebrities? Love the show. Keep up with the great work. Maybe it was Julio Iglesias. I, that's what I was thinking. I think that's because yeah. he's the only Hispanic person we know. He's, yeah, well, and he's 70 odd or something. Yeah. I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. Was Martin Sheen possible? Mm, that's what I think. He'd rip his clothes off. <laughs> oh, I would. <laughs> Four. Um, I don't know who, who the fuss he was then. Um, I don't. I've not. I don't think I've ever met any celebrities properly, or even experienced. I miss. Uh, I met Ray Diasi once. Oh yeah, he came to my school. I don't know whether he'd be considered a celebrity though. Really? Well, here he is. Joe, do you know who Ray Darcy is? No. Right. Yeah, Ray Darcy is a television and radio presenter. Based kind of funny Ireland. that Joe doesn't know who he is. Kind of says a lot about Ireland because he is like one of. The premier over the last fifteen Irish. years, like one of the big names. He was he was also big uh, TV kids TV host sort of back in my day. Yeah, he was on the Dan with Dustin mm. the Turkey, who was a, a Eurovision contestant for us, <laughs> and who was also a, a you know a mainstay of Irish life. Exactly. Um, yeah, he came to my school because of course he's a Kildare man. Is he? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Joe, do you not remember him being, uh, you know, very cringeworthy on the Russell Brand show when they had that feud? Oh, Jesus, yeah, of course. Yeah. Huh? I found that one time, yeah. No, I never listened to Russell Brand, either. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh. Only, well, some of them, not all of them. If Paul's playing FIFA, then I'm going to do some Last of Us multiplayer, by the um, way. Was I? Hey, I can still multi I can concentrate on the conversation. Yeah, so no, I. Ray Darcy, I believe, was from Kildare. He, he definitely came to my yeah. school, and... The thing was, he um, this was during the height of the den popularity, so we were we knew in advance he was coming, and the whole um, draw, if you would, was is Dustin over there, and also Saki, if you remember Saki. God, Saki, yeah. Saki <laughs> was a very um, intelligently named uh, sock monster, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> which was basically. Um, like a cheap rip-off Muppet character with yeah. socks well, they all hair. Were. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, they all were to an extent. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you know the Den, Joe. At least. Well, how would he? How would he know that if he doesn't? Well, know Well, I mean, Zig and Zag are, are no. Yeah, Zig and Zag. Yeah. Zig and Zag were originally created on this Irish kids TV show called The Den. Uh, okay. Before they kind of became gaudy, sort of faux adult, you know, things. Yeah. If you if you want to imagine what the den was, right? Imagine live. It's the broom cupboard. Do you remember live and kicking, right? On uh, yeah. BBC One on a Saturday morning, or what else would be? Uh, what was the one on on ITV called? Uh, S. SMT. Oh, uh, the one with Anton Deck. SMTV uh, Live. Uh, yeah, SMTV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you imagine the equivalent of that, but set in one room with one camera, that yeah. is what the and den. And no is. budget, evidently. No budget whatsoever. Um, that is what the den was, and then have you know the 
uh, Ninja Turtles on Power Rangers, yeah. I suppose, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what the American films would be. I don't know if Disney Club, maybe? Mickey Mouse Club? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, same thing, yeah. The Den... I don't, I don't know even if the Den is still on TV these days, but the Den for every sort of, you know, uh, early to late uh, 20 year old now in Ireland, the Den would definitely be a big part of their, their childhood. Podge and Raj actually were originally from the Den as well. And they had, uh, they had a, you know, a t- there was a time there where they were, they had, you know, something like, something akin to a primetime spot on, on RTE um, telling, first of all, they had that, that horror show, whatever it was, where they would tell. Uh, scared, like, a scared bedtime. Which was basically Tales from the Crypt, but yeah. Irish and shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've not liked anything they've they've done. Rather. And yeah, and then they had then they were actual late night TV hosts. I'm sure they Paz and Raj aren't even known in the UK either. I'm sure they aren't. Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm not, sure not like I've heard the name, but not. I, I think they, I think Podge and Raj were an attempt to recapture um, Zig and Zag. You know what I mean? The magic. For those unaware, Podge is a, a shortened version of the name Podrick, and Raj is an abbreviated for, uh, form of the, of the name Roger. They, they, those characters were established. By the way, they were the, they were the top heels in the den. Yeah, they were heels. They were the bad. They were kind of, they were kind of scary as well because they're quite horrid little um, melted. Face looking Muppet dolls. They're really yeah, scary. They are. And they would. Um... Do you remember what? I, th- I think you were maybe too young, Barry. Do you remember what the storyline for Zig and Zag leaving the den was? No. I, I may be. I may be misremembering this, right? But my recollection is it was. I think about 1994, um, possibly around Christmas time, and Zig and Zag were framed and blamed for breaking an alarm clock by Podge and Raj. <laughs> I do never, remember this. They never returned to the den. Then. I do remember this. Yeah, Potch and Rides were always presented as quite <laughs> sinister. Like it wasn't, yeah, it, was... it wasn't quite jovial. No, it, la- was very... you know, it wasn't like you know the bad guy in Lazy Town. He's his ridiculous camp twirl his mustache, twerp figure who flicks around his mustache. They were they were quite sinister and quite scary little um, things, and they would do things like you know. They they never did anything truly terrible because it was kids TV, but they were always they were always quite scary. <laughs> truly terrible. Right? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they never you know, they killed didn't, a man on air. They didn't kill him, but yeah, they were they were quite scary, and so they graduated into this kind of a uh, late night adult puppet show thing. Uh, what the fuck? How are we on this? I don't know. This now makes sense that Zing and Zag had Irish accents. I never really thought about that. Before. <laughs> <laughs> Given that they're aliens, did you not? Did you not know um, that they were that they were Irish? No, no, because they just turned up on the Big Breakfast one day. No. Obviously, they jumped ship from the den. Yeah, they did. Kevin Nash exactly. and Scott Hall style. They just uh, turned up. I don't on the know big... why. I never understood how the whole deal came about. Why, why can they both? They're not real. They're puppets. I don't know what. No, what I mean is why the British Broadcasting Corporation effectively bought the characters from the RTE. Like, why those two characters? They weren't particularly good or interesting. Well, well, they were. I mean, they were kind of ubiquitous. Yeah. And they were very, very popular. And maybe some, you know, a, a scout of some sort was like, look, we need a, we need new puppet figures. Again, I don't know if it translates you know. to the UK, but they had, very briefly, uh, a comic book series in Ireland as well. So and, and, I believe, a number of musical hits. They had a... Um, they also briefly had a... Um, this is completely... I mean, anyone who didn't live in Ireland or the UK, imagine that American listeners is this nonsense. Sorry, yeah, Steve. Yeah, what the fuck this is. Sorry, Steve. And Scott. Um, Scott and... They briefly had a, a music quiz show as well called... Um, oh, God, that was horrible. Too Fat, I think it was called. Yeah, with yeah. PH, yeah. I don't remember what, what, what the... Um, the quiz format. So yeah, Ray, Ray Darcy originated on this show. Not originated, but he... Yeah, how did he get onto the subject? He, we were discussing meeting celebrities, and I mentioned oh, Ray yeah, Darcy. Ray Darcy yeah. He uh, he came to prominence on this show, and he is still a fairly prominent radio, uh, and is not really television anymore. Radio? Although the thing is, radio radio is still really huge in Ireland, so so by virtue of him being on the radio, he's still a, a huge name. Yeah. I'm actually, we're actually discussing, I'm doing a broadcast journalism class this semester, and we're looking like a just who's prominent and who's around and looking at the listening figures and god a lot of people listen to radio in this country more than I more than I realised yeah well <laughs> we're still coming out of the famine a lot of people still don't have televisions um, I still haven't started this last week I'm just at the start menu here hang on I'm gonna open Joe up what about you any, any you, you about to say you had met somebody I believe mm, I don't know She's speaking of Irish I did see Niall Quinn once oh really oh I yeah, oh, I was excellent the Manchester City striker. No, yeah, I was going to an FA Cup semi-final, and um, it was, he was staying at the same hotel. 
Oh, really? And just going to the match, yeah, so I saw him outside. It was it was Millwall versus Sunderland. Okay. Um, he's obviously involved with Sunderland. Oh, uh, is he still involved with Sunderland? I, he left. He, he was at the time. He's a, but, he's um, a Sky Sports um, commentator. Yeah, and a bunch of Millwall fans began singing some quiet um, derogatory songs about him. Well, he is a tall, big-nosed uh, string of piss. <laughs> Like yes, it. very true. Easily one of the worst pundits ever. Oh, awful, yeah. Um, ooh, that's a good goal, by the way. Um, so I'll, I'll go on to my second email now. Regarding, um, this is from Scott, and it's regarding career turning points. He says, that last week we were talking about when um, Matthew McConaughey, when did he become a serious actor? And thinking back on it, I think it was with the movie The Lincoln Lawyer. Which, by the way, in, uh, in in midweek, I've had this discussion with most people, and that is often the, the point that we've come to, the Lincoln Lawyer, between that and um, even Tropic Thunder, while not a serious movie, was sort of a step in the right direction. He says before that he was doing standard rom-com movies, where he was the good-looking beefcake. I think he's still, still a good-looking beefcake, Scott, don't get me wrong here. <laughs> and after that, he's moved on to more serious roles. Also, speaking of Sting coming to the WWE... I think that having him wrestle at Mania would be the least interesting thing they could do with him. He was fat and slow in TNA. I don't see how having him show up to take on Undertaker would make things improve any. I know yeah. it's a dream match everyone has wanted to see, but I want to see it 15 years ago, not now, when both guys are half what they used to be. Hope yeah. you have a good weekend, Scott. I've um, seen a surprising amount of people who who are on board with this idea of him doing anything other than wrestle the Undertaker, and I'm, I'm baffled by it. I honestly Yeah, well, we spoke about this last week about... Actually, how like I don't I don't particularly want to see Sting wrestle other like anybody WrestleMania. Um, the rumors that have been going around is that they're considering him for more sort of a general manager gimmick. But even that, I'd be like, it's, ah, it's not like he's it's not like he's... the Sting character that since like the mid nineties. It's like it's not like he it's not like he's bad in that role, like because he's done it in Impact, and he's like he's fine. But you gonna pay all that money for someone to come in and do that and be okay at this and you know do a functional job? And I like... think a, a more interesting thing is. If they brought him in for maybe three matches a year, mm. and rather than have him wrestle on, say, the same show as Undertaker, I think I discussed this idea on the show before, was to spread their um, spread their part-timers up over the year. Mm. So there's always a special attraction on the show, rather than having five of them at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have Undertaker at WrestleMania, that'd be his show. Uh, Brock does WrestleMania and Extreme Rules the odd time. Maybe mm-hmm. have Sting come out like do SummerSlam and maybe Survivor Series or something. Have be, be Sting wrestling, you know, and have make make that feel special that way. Mm. Um, in that way, you have Sting on the contract. You can use him for the network, but he's not on every week, diminishing returns. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, like losing the the whole specialness of Sting being in WWE. Like, and especially with Sting how he's nowadays, I feel like that would wear off very quickly. Just the idea of him being another authority figure who every now and then you've pushed me to it, I'm going to wrestle. Like, oh God, what, fuck off. Why does it make any sense? Why would, how are they going to appoint him as GM? What? I'm so sick of GMs what would the and authority be? figures and investors and just fuck off. Get a new idea. It's, I know, it's the, been 15 years. The authority figure um, really has only ever worked once. That was when Vince McMahon did it in 1998. MVP is like the weirdest pick in the fucking world. I to know, do this. he's just a wrestler. He's just a wrestler. He's I, mean, the, I, get, I get that he's like investor. nearly 40, but still. Yeah, it is a very strange one. Um, as far as Sting, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what they're going to do with him. I don't know what they're going to do with him, but ideally it would just be a, a, a come in and, and leave every now and then deal where he does it like a match feud with somebody. Rather than like a general manager, they're bringing in Sting after all these years, and he's the general manager of SmackDown. Sting. I mean, just... <laughs> I love that decision by Sting. <laughs> oh, Bago, <laughs> we fight on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. God, I um, love it. Yeah, get rid of JBL or uh, as well. Is he like the general manager of NXT or something? As well? Yeah, but I mean that's fine. Like whatever. Yeah, yeah but have, have him only do that then. Don't yeah. have him on commentary anymore. Did they initially only commit bring him in on commentary because Jerry Lawler died that time? Yeah, but how, apparently, how, how apparently they thought he was really good. Huh? Apparently they thought he was really good. He was all right when they did it, but he's very quickly just become repetitive and he doesn't really contribute anything. Yeah, 
Revive me, you bastard. Come on. <laughs> um, there we go. So, as far as Sting coming in, I agree that having him not wrestle WrestleMania is the, is the, the, the best uh, the best thing to do. Because, not only that, but they're going to have to shoehorn him in somewhere. And mm-hmm. Well, this year, yeah. This year's probably Russia a mistake. feud, basically. Um, and I don't know whether I'd be interested with anyone who's not already booked into a match. Like, like well, whether it's Sting, Dolph Ziggler or something. You know they I mean? should just have him appear in the rafters once a month until WrestleMania 31. That'd be fine. Yeah. And he can wrestle The Undertaker. And lose. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I mean, if they eventually want to do Sting Undertaker out of WrestleMania, the only problem is they're going to have to bring up... Bing up, bing them up there, please. They're gonna have to, they're gonna have to bring up Sting and establish Sting as a credible contender, which will mean Sting going over your, your Daniel Bryan's and your Randy Orton's of the world. I don't think he'll be going over Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan. Yeah, but how are they gonna do Sting Undertaker then? They're gonna have, have to establish have him beat Sting. Zack Ryder. <laughs> Zack Ryder's in the bag. Now it's time for the Undertaker. Um. So either their choice is really is the, is the hotshot Sting Undertaker straight away, have that Sting be Sting's first thing, or build to it somehow. And I don't know whether it's a good idea to have Sting come in as as one of these main legends at the age he is. Like it's fine when you do it with a Jericho, or you do it with a Rob Van Dam to a lesser extent. But with Sting, I mean, especially now that given that they've only got the one belt, we're now starting to see these little issues with the, with the way they've been running it for the last few years where you bring in a guy like um, Rob Van Dam or Sting and you can't have them you know feud over the world title yeah um, and the, I think the damage they've done to the Intercontinental US is so irreparable that you know what are you, you going to do bringing Sting to feud over the the IC title or something could happen I don't know I don't know what they're going to do with Sting it's weird yeah we have to wait and see I guess they can bring back WCW. It's yeah, Eric Bischoff. Do you know who I... Yeah, do you know who I've been missing this week? And I don't know why he suddenly came into my head. But Jim Mitchell, of all people. Yeah. I think you've you've talked at various times over the course of this podcast on how you miss Jim Mitchell. I like Jim Mitchell, the sinister yeah. minister. Because yeah. I, I never really saw him as a sinister minister way back in the day. But when I started watching TNA in 04, he was Abyss's manager. Mm-hmm. And later, his father. I'm your father, <laughs> Bits. And we thought, I don't know. I just I was thought, I thought his shtick was very fun. I, I was really into him as a manager. His weird voice, his pointy eyebrows. I don't think we have enough little characters like that anymore. Everyone is too, um, too similar to everybody else. We don't have these characters who have the little. Fair enough. However, however you deliver your promos or however you wrestle, that's fine. If, like, with the matches we get out of this. Perfect, I'm very happy. But with the little characters, like the way Jim Mitchell had his little pointy eyebrows pointing up and his little voice he would affect. I mean, Dean, Dean Ambrose is nearly the closest we have to somebody who does something a little bit differently than everybody else. Um, and I miss Jim Mitchell. Damn it. Bring him back. Didn't they bring him back very briefly for as a Sinister Minister one time? What was that about? Maybe for those one night only things? I think it was. No, on Raw, I think it was. On Raw? Yeah, I thought that the... Maybe for, yeah, for... For, for one for one off... Hang on. I don't that, does sound, that does sound familiar, but I don't recall the specifics of it. Hang on, Sinister Minister. I'm going to look this up here. James Mitchell. I'm pretty sure he came out on a Raw one time. Um, he was never actually in WWE, funny enough. No, it was TNA. It was on July 5th, 2013. He made an appearance at TNA one night only, Hardcore Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. A, a, a wonderful comeback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in WCW from 1997 until 1999. It's James Bond. Anyway, they're all my emails. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Scott, for sending them in. If anybody else wants to do it, churchofpodcast.com, emails, and click on Paul. Send it to Paul. Joe. Scott Wright, WWE Network and current programming. Hello, Joe. <clears throat> I was listening to another podcast. <gasps> what? Why? I don't recommend that. And one of the hosts... Well, it's so fucking these days. Um, it was it was ex- Jim Ross, that was. <laughs> My God! Kiss it your was, promise, bitch! It was Vince McMahon's podcast. He just started one as well. <laughs> um, well, quite frankly, uh, 
Or if you have trouble getting an erection, <laughs> I recommend these boner pills. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the hosts was explaining why WWE is programming things the way they are right now, and suddenly it made much more sense. With the launch of the network, the WWE wants as many people to subscribe as possible. This means reaching as many people as possible. Who was on TV when the WWE was at its most popular? DX. Yeah. So I popped the Outlaws, uh, so I popped the Outlaws, and they win the titles. Someone from the next year is up and bringing people in, welcome back Batista. Everyone they bring back is just to help get subscribers to the network. That would explain Sting as well. Um, maybe they'll bring back Bruno as well. I'm surprised um, Bruno hasn't done more. I was thinking that. Dig, I was, dig I was up listening. Gorgeous George. <laughs> I was listening to him on AOW, and I was like, <laughs> why hasn't he done more, uh, Bruno? Um, one other thing, have you noticed that ever since Paul started talking about Mama on CSP, his life has started to go downhill? <laughs> yes, I think we talked about this. He mentioned Mama on the show two weeks Weird, before. Weird, it is. Uh, then Mama was brought up a couple of weeks later, he pulled his Achilles, he mentioned him again and made fun of Voodoo to Mama, and he came down with a cold. <laughs> Makes me wonder how many times Mama is going to be mentioned on the show before Paul ends up in hospital, or worse. Um... <laughs> He's also started slipping back into his old habit of pronouncing film, film. Oh dear, film. Okay. Sorry for the long-winded email, Scott. Thank oh, you, I like that Scott McAvoy. Thank you very much for emailing in with your thoughts. That's my emails for the week. I do say film a lot, but that's because I'm Irish. That's my disability. Film. Oh, what a film, really. Oh, Liam film. Neeson, by the way, was in the Lego movie too. Don't even forget that. He was very good. Oh yeah, I saw him in the trailer. Um... Yeah, film. I just say film, and I, I I do agree with Scott's point regarding like the outlaws. I think there's a little difference though between having the outlaws present and actually making the, the tag team champions mm. being your. And I mean, in fairness, the other tag champion was Goldust. Um. So, yeah, there's a lot of lot of nostalgia going on at the moment. Yeah, I can see I can see the point. I don't think I don't know whether the New Age Outlaws are that um, integral to people buying the network these days though. Uh, I mean, stuff like that's always hard to measure. People say stuff like, "Oh, well, you know, you got to bring up the visibility," but it's like, eh. yeah. that, "Is that is that a straw man?" You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, in fairness, like I say, my brother has been watching wrestling a little bit more lately, and I, you know, he's very excited about the Batista return. So maybe there is something to that, you know? Yeah. Listen to this show, is he? Uh, no, he doesn't. Oh. Okay. He barely watches it. He barely watches Raw. But so, was... do, so, so do we. <laughs> I watched Raw this week in its entirety. Yeah. Um, I watched the first hour live because I was like, or oh, was I'm really it SmackDown? T- I can't tell the difference because this was a completely pointless Raw this week. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. I was going to watch it live even though I had college the next day because I was like, oh, well, this week of all weeks, you know, with everything that's happened, I have to be up live. Then I realized it's just business as usual and I went to bed. Yeah, it was, it was a very typical, atypical Raw. Yeah. Um, so I have the news here ready to go. First of all, let me just say this as well. Um, as I was watching. TV this week. I think it was Simpsons I was watching. Um, I'd bought some goodies, as I'm liable to do, okay? And by goodies I mean, I bought some Oreo cookies, a Terry's chocolate orange, which is the chocolate for those who are. Uh, a few, a few, a few uh, cans of, nice. of Pepsi. The king of cola drinks, by the way. Um, I saw Barry complaining that they, they didn't have... Uh, Subway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Upgrade to Pepsi then. That's that's yeah. not, not a problem. Yeah, well, I, I have to have, I have, to have a problem, Pepsi. baby. Go better drink. No. Oh, superior. So I was uh, having a little a little sneaky Oreo cookie and my brother said to me I, was, I, was, oh, I think we're watching Simpsons anyway, I forget what it was. He was like, Why don't you put a bit of that Terry's chocolate orange in, in the Oreo? I was like, Ha ha Wait a minute here, let's try this. <laughs> So I twist it off the top of the Oreo cookie, right? Perfect uh, twist. Do you guys ever watch Oreo Oration, by the way, on YouTube? I have never bothered, honestly. Uh, I love Oreo Oration. That's actually how I got into eating Oreo cookies. I love Oreos. Eh? How did you just knock it into them by existing? I never, I never ate them before. I don't know. Anyway, twist the top off one. Snapped off a little segment of, of Terry's Chocolate Orange. Yeah. Put it, in, put it on the cream and put the lid of the Oreo on top, right? Took a bite out of it. Heavenly. Really? Yeah. One of the one of the, the single best things I've ever eaten. <laughs> the only problem is you can't have too much of them or you die of diabetes, like instantly. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, they put that in the box, do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like smoking. Smoking yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the cigarette just, picture, just a picture of you on the box. <laughs> <laughs> Oreo crumbs out of my mouth. Gordon. <laughs> so I had like two or three of those. And um, can I just say, if anyone out there has, has the option to buy Oreo, original flavor Oreos, your classic uh, chocolate cookies with the vanilla cream, and Terry's Chocolate Orange, also the original. None of this dark chocolate, Cherry Chocolate Orange nonsense. No, no, no. You snap off one segment and you put it in. A little sandwich. Tastes so good. So, so good. And anyway, here's the wrestling news for the week. Yeah, let's do it. As I salivate over the, the prospect of having another of those Oreo Terry's Chocolate Orange monstrosities now in a second. Um, I'm going to delete some of these news stories because we've covered them very briefly already. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to talk about Chikara Chikara lives... Yep. yep. Yeah. Um, actually, man, man on bus was drunk. We've done that. <laughs> I don't know anything about Sting, so we'll skip that. Um, so first of all, WWE this week put a list out of all the available pay-per-views that are going to be available at the launch of the network. The last. A lot of them. Almost every one, if you will, uh, included. Uh, somewhat controversially is the WWE Over the Edge pay-per-view from 1999, which is infamous as being the pay-per-view at which Owen Hart fell to his death. Um, so that's apparently going to be on the uh, on the network in an edited form. Um, so I found that that's, that's pretty interesting that it's on there. Um, for those who've never seen it, and I'm one of the people who has seen Over the Edge, uh, it's a terrible pay-per-view first. Yeah, yeah. Aside from the obvious, the obviously terrible event of of the death of Owen Hart, not a good pay-per-view anyway, before or after the fall. Well, uh, it was hardly going to be good after, I don't think. I, I know, I know. But I just mean in terms of people that are going to be seeking this out, the only people I can imagine that are going Warriors. to be interested in watching... No, no, not necessarily. But the only people that I can see watching this pay-per-view are those who claim to have seen it but who never have yeah, yeah, yeah. because those who have seen it will have no interest in watching it and those who have never seen it will either not watch it because they know what it is or as Barry said out of out of a sick curiosity will watch it yeah. um, so I don't really know what the benefit of having it at on. I mean, it's, it's, it seems a strange decision considering they've never released it on DVD or anything like that. They've never released it on video or DVD. They stopped yeah. using the name over the edge. Yeah. Um, the only thing I can imagine is that it's just for completionist's sake. For them yeah. to be able to say we have all the pay per views ever. I mean, I don't think too many people would have been upset had it been left out. Yeah, I don't know. You never know. Yeah, I know, you do have the, the odd drag of humanity on Twitter <laughs> going... <laughs> what the very odd yeah. You know? Um, so, yeah, that's something. Also, on, on Is the Night of Champions from 2007, which is littered with Chris Benoit chants, because that was the night he missed, uh, as he was too busy at home killing his family. Yeah. Um, so, of course, we had Johnny Nitro win the ECW title that night over CM Punk in his stead. <laughs> So I don't know. I wonder will they edit? Surely they edit the chance out of that one as well. The Ben Watt chance. You would you would assume. You would yeah. I think they probably would. But they're not they're not editing him off of stuff. So the chance I can't imagine are going to be. But I mean, fair enough not editing him out because I believe that the the thing they're the actual notice they're putting up before the episodes is is not anything to do specifically with Chris Benoit. But they'll just be stating that the the show contains wrestling. Uh, personalities and characters, so that they're essentially saying it's the Chris Benoit character that we're showing here, mm. not the man killed. You know what I mean? That, that's apparently what's going to be something like that. I think there's a difference between showing a Chris Benoit match and having the chance for him the night he killed his family. You know what I mean? I think they'll probably edit the chance out. Um, so I can see that happening. As far as over the edge, I'm not getting an Eric anyway, but for those who do, give that one a miss. In fact, give most of the pay-per-views from 98 and 99 a miss. Yeah. As as as, as fond as people remem- remember that period, the wrestling was not particularly good compared to nowadays. Uh-huh. Um, um, definitely some stinkers in there. Think. What, what good matches? There were 98. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I mean, mo- to be fair, most of the good ones were the main events, so that, at least that's a good thing. Yeah. This was, I don't know, this was Car yeah, Crash, the Russo, no, era, hey, three minutes on the undercard. You know. HBK Austin, WrestleMania was a good match. Um, uh, it was. It was okay. It was uh, Considering the caliber of those two, it was not, uh, you know. But I don't know what other main events were that good in 98. You had, you had Undertaker and Kane with Austin as a referee in a complete stinker. You had the Survivor Series Deadly Game. Rock that was great. Right. Deadly game. <laughs> Deadly game. Um, oh, fully loaded. Um, Rock Triple H. Um, that was 99, the strap match. No, they had another match. They had a ladder match at SummerSlam 98. Oh, yeah. That was good. Which on okay. Taker Austin made event that show. So. Oh, you had the dungeon match between Owen Hall and Ken Shamrock. Check that out. So, are you listing good matches or. <laughs> um, just look at that. Val Venus defeated Jeff Jarrett. That's uh, sounds good. Uh, Mark Henry defeated Vader. Ooh. That would be what I'd be interested in watching today, perhaps. Yeah. Well. Uh, King of the Ring '98. Oh, uh, with the Undertaker of Mankind down the cell. The yeah. Instance. Check out that. Oh, God, Henry, killed him. If you haven't seen him fall off the cell fifty times, check that one out. Um, oh, I think that match is still. I think it still holds up uh, as a spectacle today. Uh, no, because it's different between seeing a clip of being thrown off and actually watching the match. Yeah, the match is better. Um, Breakdown '98. Owen Hart defeated Edge. That was the one at the end where Vince McMahon stole the belt from Austin when Mark Mero defeated Droz. You can't have it anymore. Spoilers. Dilo Brown defeated Gangrel. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite gang, Grail. Like, See, oh, these are all characters people lovingly remember, and most of them were shit. Yeah, D Generation X to beat, defeat Jeff Jarrett and Solomon Justice. Who? And uh, the Hog Farmers. Oh, Jesus, okay. And Kane and The Undertaker defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin. In the, in the triple threat match. Christ. What a lot of shit. <laughs> right, in other news, uh, if you're a wrestler in 2014 with an eye... You might want to give this week a miss because eye injuries are abound. Um, Naomi on Raw suffered a apparently a bruised orbital bone when Aksana saw fit to knee her full force in the face. That was a preposterous spot. <laughs> the likes of which I have never seen before. Um, Aksana decided to do the move on Raw, which, by the way, is a move illegal in mixed martial arts. Yeah. Um, to knee a, a grounded opponent in the head. But in WWF real wrestling, do it! And she <laughs> drilled Naomi right, as Brian Alvarez was saying, right in the eyeball. And uh, yeah, Naomi then won the match with a split legged moonsault, which is a bit mental. Uh, John Cena is apparently had so, an eye injury. He got poked in the eye on a house show uh, during the week, and his eye got all swollen. So he's, he's, that's why he wasn't on Bra this week, apparently. Which led to rampant speculation that he was like injured and shit was going to go down and they'd go groveling to punk and all that or stuff. Or did he walk out? Walk out yeah. Like Punk did. Um, speaking of CM Punk, there's been a little bit of CM Punk news. Not as much as last week, of course. But um, wrestlers have been writing anonymous letters. I don't know if you've seen this, Barry. God. But, um, yeah, I have. Four yeah. newsletter. Figure four weekly. Going like, CM Punk's a little bitch. And uh, it certainly makes for interesting reading. Um, I don't know whether I'd be too uh, easy to, to throw myself in and believe every word because, you know, there's always two sides to every story. But um, it's definitely interesting when you take both sides and see what both sides have been saying. If you were to watch the CM Punk interview with Ariel Helwani from the other week, which was actually two days before he <laughs> left the company. Yeah. Um, and then I had to read this letter that was apparently sent into the, the newsletter. Um. Definitely very interesting as to how CM Punk portrays himself and as to how he's perceived, apparently, by others. It was obviously an anonymous letter. We don't know who's written. It might it was be... CM Punk. <laughs> Paul I I've hit him in the head with that ladder at that time. Um, also, CM Punk this week was challenged to an MMA fight by the Green Power Ranger. Um, what? And, and, and he was offered to do porn by Brazzers. Yeah. So, he's very much in demand. <laughs> Certainly. I love all the, I love all the straight-faced theorizing that he's going to do MMA. Yeah. Like, as if. He's like 36 and small and skinny and beaten to fuck. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, the Green and Power also Ranger. a wider who doesn't like anything, let alone getting hit in the face. Yeah, the Green Power Ranger, who, by the way, for those keeping score, was also the White Power Ranger, uh, and later on the Red Power Ranger. Um, it's the hoodico of his day. <laughs> a man who, in the words of Sting, wears many hats. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think his name is Jason. <laughs> Terulo. <laughs> he uh, he's apparently forty now. Uh, and in one, in one of his last MMA fights, he threw his back out. So if CM Punk's going to start anywhere, this might not be a bad place to begin. Yeah. Um, although I, think anywhere, I think anywhere is a bad place for him to start. Of course, if Jason David Frank is losing, he can, of course, call on the power of the Megazords, which CM Punk does not have that power. Um, I don't know whether the Dragon Zord flu would be an, an illegal weapon in MMA. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, of course, never watched Power Rangers, so he's finding this completely interminable. How, how do you mean he never watched Power Rangers? Who's your favorite Power Ranger, Joe? Um, the pink one. Oh, good choice. Touche. Um, there's some news regarding potential WWE returns. Um, first of all, Rob Van Dam tweeted this week that he's interested in returning around WrestleMania season. Uh, again, I don't know where they're going to fit him in, really. Um, and I didn't, he didn't exactly light the world. He was fine in his last run last year. But what's Rob Van Damme really going to do? They, they didn't really make the effort with him, to be fair. No. Like they, they didn't book him any differently than before he left, you know? Exactly. Um, and then we have some um, broken down wrestlers looking to return. Um, apparently Undertaker is going to return pretty much right after Elimination Chamber. Well, it's yeah. Possibly on that Raw to build up to the launch of the WWE Network. And um, wheelchair-bound TNA wrestler Kurt Angle is apparently looking to get back into the WWE as well. He had a minor uh, argument with some TNA officials on the on the England tour. Um, and of course he did a, that mental moonsault the other week. Uh, did you guys see the photo of him in the airport in the wheelchair? Yeah, I heard that might have been just... Uh, <laughs> work. <laughs> you want a photo quick? Oh, put me in the wheelchair. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Um, although Kurt Angle... There's been reports of Kurt Angle being seriously banged up since like... 2003? Yeah. For years. So, I mean, seeing him in a wheelchair, it's very sad. But it's not... Yeah, but if you've got a leg injury, you go in a wheelchair. It's not like he's disabled and... Yeah, yeah, yeah but he, 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 he might be. disabled, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there were reports. I remember reports back from at least 2006, which was like that he he was having trouble standing up for long periods of time backstage, and having to be carried around after his matches. Like that was that was eight years ago, and he's not exactly been, you know, modifying his style to a safer style ever since. You know, um, maybe after he saw that crucifixion angle in ECW, he should never have come back to that. <laughs> For his own for his own health. Um it would certainly be interesting to see him. I don't know what they what they would do with him at this stage though. I think he can still have the odd match, but I don't I don't think he, I don't think they want the liability that is him. Yeah. I don't know, he's been he's been involved in less controversy lately, I would say. Like he's he went off the rails for a while there where he was stalking Rocket Khan and He was only he was caught DUI only last year, wasn't he? Again. Was he? Yeah, oh, he was in rehab, of course. He, on, he I just uh, I can right. imagine being in TNA, and every time his contract comes due, all he's doing is talking about the interviews and, and just blatantly on Twitter. Oh, I'm so open to go back to WWE. I really, I really want to wrestle Daniel Bryan. I really want to wrestle CM Punk. I love wrestling in Chicago and LA and oh yeah, Orlando for the last eight years. You know, <laughs> my God, he's so flippant about TNA. It's just there are so many people who are How just so unapologetic. About TNA these days, but you, if you work there and you're like their guy, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, but I mean, even the, even the guys who have been there so long to this stage, I mean, they, you've, they've got to see the writing on the wall, really. Write it on the wall. What are you talking about? <laughs> TNA's ratings are through the roof, mate. One, one oh, by the way, four. Magnus favorited that tweet. I know. Uh, yeah. Oh, Joe knows. Joe, Joe's been sitting there on a computer waiting for it. Joe What's did a tweet on our, on a Twitter saying that TNA's ratings are through the roof since he became the TNA world champion. He favorited our tweet. Yeah, Magnus, not me. 
Of course he did because TNA wrestlers clutch onto those small amounts of fans who do really yeah. love them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't yo, think he got that the tweet wasn't sincere. Serious. <laughs> sincere tweet, yeah. Unless it was, Joe. Mm, not fully. <laughs> um, uh, as far as outgoings, uh, Bernard of Rio, there's apparently concern that his contract's coming up and he might. Why, why would there be concern? Because he's their uh, Mexican baby face champion that they've been. This guy's mm, going to be a big easy. deal very quickly, Joe. Yeah, it's not that easy. No. Sure. Neither was Mystico. Why do these these Mexicans never work out? What they want to do is get one of them American Mexicans like Guerrero or Mysterio. Yeah. Don't get a Mexican Mexican. Get an Did American. you hear about Sin Cara, by the way, saying he's apparently signed with some Puerto Rico wrestling league now? And he was yeah. interviewed saying, why would I bother to learn English? I wrestle just fine in Japan without learning their language. So he apparently has had no idea how the, the wrestling world works outside of Mexico, where he speaks the language. Also, Especially it's not—it's not, it's not a—it's not. Sorry. You know, he does a tour in Japan and just wrestles there and doesn't, you know, mm. doesn't have to live the life. You live in America now, and you work in a very weird, contentious office. Like, what know? if? No, but what if they want to have him do do publicity anywhere outside of these Latin areas? Yeah. Like they can't do anything with him. I mean, he's he's exclusively a wrestler. And what for the guys that they're going to push and invest a lot into? Like they're paying his Cara a lot of money. Yeah. They want you to do radio. They want you to visit schools. They want you, you know, everywhere. Yeah. That was actually one of the things that was mentioned in the most recent anonymous letter to Brian Alvarez. <laughs> for whatever reason, that's the person you choose, Senator. Um, he was like, he said it to us. <laughs> But he, this supposed WWE employee was like, Punk complains about all this and he wants to be the face of the company. But he is simultaneously also a huge grouch who would never like doing all the media or any of that shit. So he wants, you know, wants his cake and eat it too and all that jazz. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, Mystical's a weird one. I mean, they have uh, Del Sol in Developmental who is sure. an American Bilingual. Mexican. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and has had already, ha- already had great matches with Americans. Exactly. You know. He is a tiny, tiny man though. Well, yeah, they don't, if, it's a, if it's a luchador, they don't care about that. That's true, I guess. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anyone else that would fit the bill? Because there's some, like, the T, the AAA show I watched last year, while I didn't like the show, there were definitely some guys that, that I thought would probably do well in America. One, for example, is um, the the TNA, he was Macias in TNA. I think he's uh, Ricky Banderas in Mexico. Or sometimes he still uses the Macias name. He, uh, he's again. Uh, I think he, I think he might be Cuban, possibly Cuban American, but he's bilingual as well. And he's he's got a, he's a big guy with good size, so he's a guy possibly that they maybe better than Del Rio. Although Del Rio is maybe a slightly better wrestler, um, a guy they could look at. There's another guy called um, God. What's his name? Jesus. He's he's a. Hey, do you mean? I think. <laughs> Ooh, I don't mean his use. Uh, his name is Air. God, what's his name? Fuck, I can't remember this guy's name. Anyway, there's. I'm sure there's the odd American, um, Af- uh, African American. Get some African Americans in. No, to play this... Mexicans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yo, yo, Quiero, my boy. Um, Jack Evans, of course. He's been down in Mexico for a while. Still doesn't make him a Mexican. Hey, he probably is one, isn't he? No. Where's he from? Uh, America. Okay, he's from California. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you went mm, America. <laughs> that's, that's a good guess. I can't find this guy's name. He must be dead or something. He must not exist anymore. Um. Oh, and Helico is his name. There you go. Mm. He is from uh, South Africa. But resides in Barcelona, Spain, so he's um, world traveler, multilingual as well. And Helico, he was very good as well. He was one of the guys that I thought was probably one of the best I saw when I was watching that show. Um, so let's see, let's run through these other stories. Um, uh, Extreme Rules location is is now set to be in New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. Uh, so that means Zach Ryder's going to win the world title, man. Yeah. Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Speculation was that it was going to be in Seattle. 
but apparently it is. <laughs> but but um, but yes, Dad, I would just love to spend an evening with you at a circus where a bunch of grown men in their underwear love to pretend to fight each other. Now get that dog off the seat the sofa. Sausages and cheese. How's it go? Ooh, Next week, your homework this week, Paul, is to watch a season of Frasier. As, why? Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's nice. Okay. Have you seen Cheers? <laughs> no. It's better than Cheers. He's in that as well. That's the Flame and Moe song, isn't it? He, um, he was in Cheers and he, he jumped ship to um, Frasier. Invaded Seattle. Mm-hmm. Is it the same character? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, a spin -off. it's a direct spin off. Okay, there you go. And finally, replacing Mae Young, Betty White has got to be on Raw. <sighs> so look forward to... What's she going to do on Raw? Apparently they've been after her for a while for some reason. Betty White. Do you know Betty White from anything? Golden Girls. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Thank you for being a friend. She's still on TV. Do, 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 do. She's on all these shows or whatever. She's on, isn't she, she does... Oh, what's that shitty... The voice is it? That thing. The voice. She does something like that. She's uh, one of those, you know, uh, loose women. Their version of loose women. Oh, oh yeah. It it was, the the view. The view. The view. Sorry, yeah. The voice. Is she on the view. Like, I don't know if she's on that specific one, but I think she is on that nature of show. It's like Betty uh, uh, Yeah, like I said, not that specific one, but you know. Uh, let's see. The only thing I know Betty White from, she was in a film called Lake Placid. Ew. 1999. And she had a line where she said, um, This is where if I had a dick, I'd tell you to suck it. Which is, is funnier when it's been said by Betty White. She's on The Talk. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. And Betty, Betty White's off their rockers. Yeah, they sure it's, are. It's a hidden camera show where old people oh. play pranks. Oh, I, I saw I saw the British version of that. Yeah, yeah. God, it's horrible. Tacky shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's old people and it's like, oh, help me with the motor scooter. Oh no, I crashed into a thing. Oh, oh, look at me, I'm acting provocative and sexy because of course, you know, you young people think we just don't have sex. <laughs> That's all the news. Yeah. That's all the news for this week. Uh, also, TNA, uh, the details of their uh, Wrestle 1 deal with KG Muto came out. Yeah. Uh, they're going to do a one night only pay per view, and here's the gist it's going to be Wrestle 1 guys are going to determine number one contenders over the next few weeks. And then in March, uh, Magnus, the tag team champions, and someone else, Scale Kim. No, no, not uh, X Division champion. And Abyss, who is the TV champion, by the way, still. Oh yeah, uh, uh, they, are going to, they are going to uh, uh, go over there and defend those titles against those number one contenders, uh, and it's going to be taped. It's going to, basically TNA will pay their guys, but Wrestle One will pay the cost of the actual show. Yeah. Uh, so basically, TNA gets one of their uh, one night only shows without the cost of actually having to do it. You know what I mean? So cheap. So uh, that's <laughs> that was the motivation behind that deal, and also uh, KG Muto as the Great Muta will be at lockdown. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't know what he's going to be able to do because he's incredibly limited physically. Oh, but I also... Yeah, also, one of his... <laughs> one of his... Uh, someone else from the He promotion. can do a moonsault off a cage. Oh, God. He's going to DJ for the bromance. <laughs> oh, oh. Boom, boom, boom. Well, yeah. But um, someone else is going to be there with him. I can't remember who. I can't remember his name. He'll have a tag team partner who I will be there for more than one date and is actually going to be in TNA for a while. So, yeah. So, they're getting something like that deal. I have no idea. But um, it also emerged that the reason the Toby Keith buying TNA thing fell through, which subsequently led to him giving Jeff Jarrett a lot of money for some reason to build a promotion, uh, is Bob. Car they were in the closing moments of making a deal, and Bob Carter said, I'll sell you this company, but Dixie has to remain in some facet of power and has to remain on screen as a character. And Toby Keith was like, well, look, I'm not giving you... A company. I'm not buying this company and still having all these creative limitations, so he pulled out. So that is the reason TNA was not sold. God. Dixie Carter 
has ruined TNA in so many ways. Mm-hmm. What a mark. <laughs> what a mark. Um, yeah, she, I, I didn't watch any clips from TNA this week, I'm sad to say. Um, but definitely last week with the, the, the big return was almost ruined. And it wasn't that good anyway. But it was almost ruined by her showing her big, puffy, weird face into the camera going, Get the investor out here! Now! Oh my god. And I understand that heels are meant to be irritating and annoying. But not to the point where you just want to turn it off because they're so bad. Nixie Carter's pretty bad. Yeah, she's pretty bad. She's pretty bad, baby. Um... So yeah, that's the news. That is the news of the week, and um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested. I think the 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 KG Muno thing could be fun, if nothing else. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it would be a super good match. Um, I mean, they they're they're so big into him and his character. If they had someone else do it, as who was that guy who who had basically the same gimmick? He was um, oh um, Japanese guy in TNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that character called? Not Sakura, that was the WWP. No, it was, um... Oh, fuck. I don't remember what the character was called. Where well, he was basically the Great Muda. Um... <laughs> if you know now, go to Twitter, hashtag F4W Live, and we'll do it. God, what was that guy's name? He was so terrible. Who? He was a terrible wrestler as well. Who? Who what? What are you talking about? I didn't... I wasn't listening. The guy who, in TNA, basically did the Great Muda gimmick. Ser- like, not as a joke or anything. or as a I know exactly. I mean, he was relegated to, like... He had a big red face paint. Explosion. Yeah. yeah, I know the guy. Oh, fuck, this is really annoying me. At Chair Shop Pod, if I you think, know I think, was he the guy who played... No, he played Suicide funny. once or twice, he did. Yeah, yeah, it was. I uh, His name escapes me, but I know the exact guy you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. I'm going to have to look it up. I'm going to have to look it up. Sorry for wasting everyone's time as we ponder this, but... Just look up people who portrayed suicide and that will... Uh... Oh, I looked up TNA Great Muda ripoff. That, that's going to take forever. That could be it, you know. Um... Okay, hang on. TNA suicide. Kiyoshi. It was Kiyoshi. Yes, Very there we go. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Kiyoshi. Fuck. No, he was so dreadful. He is apparently the reigning AGPW Gaora TV champion. <laughs> Oh no, he was. He was in his first. He is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I get confused there. He also wrestled for. Um, he also he currently wrestles for All Japan under under the ring name Sushi. Oh God! <laughs> it's like a curry man. It's like a. It's like a Vince Russo gimmick. <laughs> so yeah, what's this, by he... the way, about Vince Russo being racist? So I've, I've not heard what this. Apparently, is. so there's these mumblings that Vince Russo is back in in TNA in some minor capacity. Yeah. Uh, Dave Meltzer addressed the room and said, "Look." There are people there who like him. Hogan and Bischoff didn't like him, but now they're out of the picture. So there is a chance that perhaps some people are talking with him and bouncing ideas off him, but he is not back in an official capacity. And so basically, this could be a problem with Wrestle 1, because Muto and other people in Japan had experience working with him, or they watch tapes or whatever they know of, of his track they record. Listen, they listen to that one interview where he's like, if I'm in America, I don't want to watch no Japs on my TV or no you want Lucha Libre, channels. You, you go to Japan. Exactly. Um, th- there is a feeling that he is racist in the way he portrays Japanese characters. Didn't he do the choppy choppy your pee pee? <laughs> I mean, he yeah he was he you know, he was prime offender during the editor. So basically, there's the feeling that if he comes back in some kind of official capacity, it is a potential uh, bridge burning opportunity for them as a company. Because he has enemies and he has a perception that he is a, a racist. That was actually reported. That's you know that's actually a thing. Okay. Well, maybe companies just stop using Vince for us. So. Yeah. I mean, there's been you know there's been there's, they taped like when they were in Glasgow. There was like four heel turns and a man versus woman match and a fucking. And this time, Shaw gimmick is that is totally yeah, racist. Type, just you know, a... he... Movie Russo reports. watches Dexter, and next thing you know, he has to have Sam Shaw be Dexter, and you know. But then TNA had had that without Vince Russo anyway, with the Ace and Ace. Yeah, true. It's not like this is a, a, a Vince only, a Vince uh, Russo only, relevant relevation. Like he, I mean, this, this is TNA. Probably this is probably Dixie Carter, putting her sticking her big face in, going, "We should have a Dexter." That's a show people like, even though it's not even on the air anymore. And, yeah. then, and, it, and it was critically panned for the last like three years of its existence. Mm. So, but yeah, so that, that was just a tidbit. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's uh, 
That's the news. News was it much? I don't feel like there was much to report on on Raw this week. It t- it just felt like a SmackDown to me. For it's just they you know they didn't address CM Punk at all. No, nope. and that was that was it. Everything else was everything else was kind of as you would expect. They're they're building to their matches. Kind of, it's actually not really clear what they're building to. Nope. Uh, there are two kinds of WrestleMania seasons: the one where things go well and the ones where things seem up in the air. And we're getting the we're getting the latter this year, I think. Yeah, it just, it just felt like it was spinning its wheels more than anything. Um, yeah. Apparently, that was another thing that was important, is that they are willing to make some changes based on crowd reactions and business indicators over the next few weeks. There's talk that Brian... They could give they could give uh, Triple H another opponent to put Brian in the title match, although I... Yeah, there was I, I don't think even if he's, Roman Reigns. Yeah. Even if Brian's in the match, I don't think he's winning, so I don't think there's any point in putting him in if he's losing, because I think the crowd are going to hate it, mm-hmm. so I don't know why you'd bother. Yeah, like, like we said, I think Daniel Bryan Triple H is the way to go with Daniel Bryan going over. Yeah, it's the best for for the show overall, for the crowd to be into it, and it not, also, not, not not to shit on everything else. It was also speculated that Brian going over is not a certainty, which is pretty hilarious. <laughs> well, after watching the last half of last year, I certainly wouldn't put the, put it against them doing something as stupid as that, where they're like, "Let's give them the championship for one day and just screw them over again and again," because fuck it. You know, that's sort of yeah. been their MO lately. And hey, I mean, look, Triple H did beat CM Punk when he was really, really getting over. And yeah. that was it. Like, they never they never had another match. There was never any more to that. I mean, yeah, it was... CM Punk did wear his blazer, though. Yeah, that, that, was, was, his, that was his comeback. That was his comeback. Yeah. Can we please? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so, yeah, Raw had, as far as I can recall, it opened with a segment between Triple H and Diane Bryan. Yep. Which seemed to me to hint that that was sort of the direction they were starting to go in. Although they've since had Kane interact with Diane Bryan a lot. Which oh. Diane Bryan is already in the Elimination Chamber match. So he's not having mm. a match with Kane at the pay-per-view, unless they were taken out of the match. Which, you know, maybe is not such a bad idea. See, as he's probably not winning, yeah. See, as he's not winning the Chamber match. Um, or, or he could, who knows? Uh... Well, Triple H knows. And he's probably not going to have it happen. Um, unless he wants to <laughs> win the title for title fight. <laughs> which, you know, let's not put, put that completely... Uh, maybe not such a bad idea. Uh, well, it's a bad idea for sure. Well, it's a bad idea, but... Maybe it's, it's not a bad prediction. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, so he was having uh, this, this segment with, with, with Triple H where he basically was saying that... Um, God, what was he even saying? This is, such, this is such a dull show, I can't even remember what happened. I believe he was saying something like that they, the, the, the authority were, were holding, the, holding the brother down. And um, eventually, didn't they, 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 no, what even happened to this show? No, the idea, didn't this, Randy Orton start the show? Randy Orton came out and spoke very loudly because people were chanting CM Punk. What am I thinking of then? You're getting you get confused. Before, wasn't it? Was it? Did Daniel Bryan open the show? No. And why did no one correct me before? <laughs> I couldn't remember either. 15 minutes. <laughs> the segment didn't happen. But uh, basically what they said was, Randy Orton was whining, and they were like, shut up, you whiner. And if you lose your match with Daniel oh, Bryan... Oh, this is... Oh, my God. Yeah, they come out on the stage. And then these two heels threatened him with Daniel Bryan. And then Triple H did the yes chance. Yeah. Completely unironically. This is the man who pedigreed down at Brian, so Randy Orton could pin him at SummerSlam last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So much for continuity. That's all I'll say. And I, mean, I, I feel like we're, we're broken records having this same conversation every week. But are they phases or are they heels or what are they? I mean, it's so poorly portrayed. Because he was, he, it wasn't like he was doing the yes chance to mock Daniel Bryan. It wasn't like he was doing the yes chance to antagonize the crowd. He was doing it because he was excited at the prospect of Daniel Bryan, like the crowd were. And he was chanting along with the crowd. And what kind of message are they trying to put across here? Hmm. I don't I understand. Know. I don't. And for something as stupid and as simple as wrestling, for someone to watch and go, I don't understand, is, should not be something that happens. You know? It's not like um, it's something, it's like a complicated. Um, Game of Thrones style thing with with very intense, complicated storylines among their mm. you know thirty or so characters. I mean, they have the same amount of characters in Game of Thrones, but it's 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 as simple as uh, I'm a bad guy and I'm a babyface and we're feuding because 
that is why now you have char- these uh, ambiguous characters that don't work in wrestling whereas they would work outside <sighs> yeah and then and then what what happened was there were um two hours of Titus O'Neil against Zack Ryder oh god level matches yeah. which god knows I never thought I'd see on a Raw ever again I thought that's what I legitimately thought that's what SmackDown was for your your Titus O'Neils of the world um but that happened on Raw no Darren Young interestingly though yeah which which to me he, suggests, he is relegated to SmackDown yeah which yeah. to me just suggests that he is um he is not in the f- immediate the plans for the immediate future um, it, it reminds me, honestly, it reminds me a bit of the, uh, the edge and on a very, a, a very, a very subdued lower level I'm talking about, but of the edge, Matt Hardy feud. Yeah. Where in what way? In, in that edge ro- had wronged Matt Hardy and people thought we were going to get this Matt Hardy, you know, comeback as, as he was a big face. But instead, Edge just beat him a few times, and then they <laughs> they sent Matt Hardy off in a box to smack them. <laughs> you know, I get to feel like that's what's happening here as well. As Titus O'Neil turns on Darren Young, but there's never going to be the comeuppance. Darren Young is just going to be on superstars and SmackDown. And I don't think I don't foresee an Edge style rise to stardom for Titus O'Neil. Sadly, no. I, well, watching... I think that's what they want. But... No, I don't. I don't think it. I, I, I was watching Titus O'Neil interview on SmackDown. They put it on the YouTube channel. I just watched that one video for some reason where he was interviewing with um, Renee Young, and he just does not come off as anything above this, like, very low-card um, star. I, just don't I, don't think, I don't think either of them come off as any... As, so, you know, I, I like him as a pair, but not as not individuals. No, I don't see, I don't see what... Um, excuse me, I don't see what's, what's going to be the result of this feud. I don't see any anything in either of these guys' future, really. No. Um, Titus, I just don't, I don't get what they see in Titus O'Neil. And apparently, they're I don't even think they see that much in him. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think he's gonna have the booking support to be anything in particular, you know, anything special. I should say. I don't think so. I don't see any. I don't see. It. I don't see any upside to, to Titus O'Neil. Uh, I was gonna call him Titus Young for a second. Titus O'Neil. Uh, Darren Young. Mm, at least he's a bit younger. No pun intended. Um. And uh, I guess he'll be around forever as a goodwill ambassador. If they weren't such a hillbilly wrestling company, maybe they could do something with the fact that he's a gay gentleman. They could, you know, portray it as you know, maybe maybe do something as outrageous as portray gay people in a positive light. Yeah, you know, as opposed to uh, <laughs> uber camp men in in leopard skin jackets and stuff. You know. Mm. Well, you know, they, they do they want to do that or do they want to be realistic, Paul? Yeah, I know. They have to have them as super camp uh, flamers, almost. A mm. um, little bit like Mex- Mexico do. Which <laughs> Mexico, God knows Mexico are stuck in the 1900s. Mm. Um, yeah, although Mexico also went overboard even by WWE standards in their portrayal of you know Los Talibanes or whatever the fuck that, that unit was called that they had in Mexico for a while. God almighty. Of course, in Mexico, they still do chair shots to the head and yeah. being all over each other. So they're not, oh, they're not exactly joined us in the, in, the, in, the, in the year 2014 quite yet. I'm shitting the bed in this game here. I'm really sucking. Oh, I'm not playing anymore. I've, I've since joined us back here in the podcast world. Well, I've, I've started... I, don't think I've skipped, I don't think I've missed a beat, really. Neither have I. I'm just saying. I'm, I've, I've missed a beat in the gameplay, mate. I'm dedicated to the podcast. For those wondering, the final score was 5-3 to me. I, I vanquished Stoke City in the end. Um, so very happy with that. So I don't know if there's really that much more to say about TV. If you guys, someone mentioned they watch Impact. Joe, I watch Impact. What did you make of it this time? Uh, there's nothing memorable. No. How was MVP? With his He's, with, with uh, his great theme song, and I won't hear a bad word against it. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a great line in it where he says, "Let the dirt sheets gossip" or something. That's the only line I can actually understand. He does, yeah. Um, I really like his theme song, i got to say. I mean, his, his promos are f- very good, you know, and he looks in good shape, I don't know, but I don't, it just doesn't seem to fit the role he's in. It doesn't, no, I don't really. I don't know, no. don't get it at all. The thing is, when he first came into WWE, he was doing the sort of 
sports star mm. free agent gimmick, which I mm-hmm. think suits him very well. I don't understand why they really quietly dropped that aspect of his character. Mm. It's like something, and I don't want to criticize WWE too much because obviously TNA is, is the problem at hand. But WWE have this, this thing where someone will get over, and as soon as they're over, rather than the character evolving, they sort of dr- quietly drop aspects of the character mm-hmm. to make them like more generic, I guess. I don't well, know, like, like Damien Sandow. Damien Sandow, of course, is a very good example. Del okay. Rio had his wink. Do you remember Del Rio winking? Mm, yeah. Vaguely. He cut a promo with someone and he'd do a really big exaggerated... Yeah, but now he does Perot instead. <sighs> That's yeah, replaced the, the, the wink. wink. was was his thing. And I'll tell you what I'm happy lately, though, is Del Rio's got the faux hawk going again. What? <laughs> don't know if anybody else has noticed that. But he's, I wonder if Brian Alvarez is going to cut a promo on that like he used to for the Miz. He's quietly brought back the faux hawk, which is my favourite Del Rio look, by the way. Um, you had... Uh, if you remember b- back as far as uh, my name is Alejandro Estrada, ha <laughs> and then he was just in ECW not doing that shtick anymore as well. Um, even Kennedy, when he was ah! there, he stopped doing the Kennedy Kennedy thing so much. Bastards. And with MVP, that was his whole thing. Was he was this mm. big bombastic sports star, and then he just eventually descended into a generic wrestling man with a Lycra jumpsuit. Generic wrestling man. Ooh. Is that? That's I what, like to watch you fight. <laughs> that's what they should have called Eddie Generico when he came to Alex. His name <laughs> is Generic <laughs> Wrestleman. <laughs> they should call him Eric Gino. <laughs> Hey, it's the Italian wrestler. Oh, forget Eric about it. Who's from New Jersey? Oh, it's the home of Extreme Rules 2014. Oh, oh. Um. So yeah, I mean MVP. I've seen. I saw his return last week. I've did. As I said, I've not watched any clips from this week, but I'm definitely a lot of worried. Dix- for- a lot of Dixie Carter on this show. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. She's no good. Do you know what we we need to get the equivalent of an Austin McMahon in TNA. We need Dixie Carter against uh, Velvet Sky. And Velvet Sky goes, "Yeah, bitch!" And then Velvet Sky puts all cement to Dixie Carter's car. Except it's not a new Corvette; it's like a, a Renault or something. <laughs> That's Dixie Carter's car. <laughs> she, she's got a duvet in the back. She sleeps in it. <laughs> That's where suicide sleeps. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I considered downloading Impact this week. That I just I couldn't bring myself to do it because I was watching, as I say, since six episodes of The Simpsons instead, which was immensely and immeasurably more fun than watching Impact would have been. Mm. Although I did watch the uh, Abyss thing with Eric Young. Where Abyss, for the first time since he joined TNA, was unmasked. <gasps> and it was Kane oh. <laughs> the whole time. It was Niles. Free <laughs> <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> so, anyway. Meris, Abyss... I need this second job to support your soap habit. Uh, uh, I also watched a bit of SmackDown. God, um, why? Well, uh, there was a good Brian Cesaro match. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, I yeah. I haven't watched that yet. I watched, just watched it. Oh, okay. There was a promo with Brian and Kane, which, yeah, they sort of referenced their history. Oh, yeah, they were attacked him, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's all I'll say. I'll skip the rest, so. All right. So you didn't watch. Uh... So you didn't really watch SmackDown then? Uh, I watched the, the Brian Kane promo, and I'm going to watch Brian Cesaro. Right. All right, then. That's enough. Yeah. For a lifetime. <laughs> Definitely. Right, well, that's the wrestling for the week of figure. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Let's leave it there, then. I'm dying to go to the toilet. You could have just gone. It's not like, you know, the show would have fallen apart. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty integral to the success of the show, bro. <laughs> well, that's he's true, a, mate. I, I'd never he's a Dixie Carter of CSP. 
<laughs> Thank you, Joe. He's got his big face and camera every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, we used to have the video show where it was just his big face. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. For three hours. Uh, we have to bring that back instead. Oh, yeah. Because sure CSP f 200 is quickly approaching. We, we, we want to do something special. Yeah, do we, though? Yes. All right, then. I might do it topless. <laughs> Just, and you're not topless now? Just some little nipple cramps on. No, I've got a Breaking Bad t-shirt on. Okay. And some some grey tracksuit albums, the hallmark of a true scumbag. God. Yeah, you got to get to Bavaria and get, get on that bus. Get on that bus, baby. Oh, God. Drunks on the bus. I, uh, to, to continue that conversation for earlier today, what point in your life you have to reach to where you're drinking on a bus. Well, uh, call I mean, me crazy, Paul. I'm gonna, I'm gonna the... assume the point where you're an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, but mm. I mean, just a guess. It's a sad state of affairs that people become alcoholics at all. You know? It is, Paul. It's very incisive. <laughs> here's my, here's Paul's tip to everyone. Here's Paul's thought of the day: <laughs> is, is don't drink too much alcohol. No, I do. Oh, don't yeah. do any drugs. Uh, some. Don't, uh, don't even smoke cigarettes like Barry Murphy does. I, d- I would agree with don't smoke cigarettes and I do not smoke them. How dare you? When's the last time you had a cigarette, Barry? Honestly, no. Don't lie I... to me. Don't lie to me because I can tell. I don't know. Uh, the other week? The other week? What's, what's, it's been months ago. Months ago. Months since a cigarette. Yep. That's pretty good. Do you know how long I've been, Barry? 25 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done you, you know, don't knock it till you try Joe's it. Just, Joe's done 29 as well. I mean, he's he's smoked heroin quite quickly, quite <laughs> but not had a cigarette in 29 years. So don't knock it till you try it. That's my logic. I've tried it. I don't like it. I'm not going to do it anymore. Fair enough. Mm. You tried drinking bleach. Uh, Give it a go. Mm. <laughs> oh God! Did you try <laughs> taking a knife and just drag it along your throat? <laughs> don't knock it till you try it. At least, come on. <sighs> I'm not going to dignify these stupid questions with answers. Well, you can't try the question if you don't have an answer or something. I <laughs> know you don't like the answer. Hmm? Yeah, no, exactly. There you go. Shut up, you idiots. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this wrapped up another spectacular edition of the Chair Shop podcast. Yeah. Uh, it's been another a fun, fun show. Fun, another fun week. I'm very happy. A banterific episode, you might say, if you're a cunt. So, well, I think uh, it's banterific. Well then. Um, <laughs> oh God. So, so uh, I guess it's about time that we uh, get into our plugs and what have you. Cheshirepodcast dot com is where you go for the episode archive for the contact us uh, aspect of the show. Click on the little email us button. You can pick your host. You can enter your subject. It could be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be about wrestling. We stress that all the time. Whatever's on your mind, or it can be wrestling. Don't feel obligated to email us about films or whatever. It's it's you know it's your preference, and um, yeah, email us. Uh, as well as that, you can uh, tweet us at Chairshot Pod. Uh, if you have a comment that you want specifically to be read on the show, uh, just stress that to us in a tweet, and we will do our best to uh, bookmark it and come back to it during the show. We want as much user interactivity as uh, we can. Also, at Chair Shop Pod is for you know weeks, you know, weeks worth of live tweets and observations and funniness and all that jazz. For more of that, you can also follow the Barry Led on Twitter. Uh, that's my personal Twitter. You can go to Paul Griffin CSP, and you can go to Griff Tannen for Paul and Joe, respectively. And I think, lads, I think that's all it for. Can I just folks. give one one more quick plug. Go on, because it, it's actually the aspect of the show that takes the most effort for me to 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 keep up with. Right. And that's please go to YouTube uh, dot com slash Chair Shot Podcast and subscribe, like, share the videos on there. Because I, I upload I upload the show in its entirety every week, and mm-hmm. it is a probably about a three gigabyte file that is going up there. So it takes a lot of time to render the video and also to upload it. So, um, sure, just spreading the love, trying to make trying to make the show as widely available as we can. So absolutely, and and you know, like and share and post the show on the YouTube video or the podcast link or whatever on your, to your Twitter friends and, family yeah. and Twitter, you know, and all that jazz. Or even write the link to it on a piece of paper and actually post it to your family. Yeah. They were like, Johnny, or, watch this for letter. I don't understand. It's just YouTube and a load of random letters after it. Well, you have to, you'll have to enter it to find out, Nana. <laughs> the television remote doesn't have these letters on it. Oh, you old bat, I hate you. Die. <laughs> uh, so, 
So yeah, uh, we'll be back next week with more fun and games, hopefully. Oh, definitely. Unless unless one of us dies or something. That's a, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, we'll probably still do it one anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's only if I die. <laughs> tri- tri- as a tribute. Yeah. Won't miss a beat. It's the best song in the world. <gasps> I've seen them four times. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. as we see ourselves to sleep, ladies and gentlemen, it is goodbye from me, Barry Murphy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Barry. It is goodbye from Paul Griffin. Goodbye, everybody. And it's goodbye with Joe Taylor. Goodbye!